you Hello, set everyone. it up that way. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Yeah, this welcome week, everybody. Brought to you by Nerdificent, Bespoke Post, and Hymns. I'm Gus. I'm Gus. Where the thing? Where's the thing? Gus, say your where's name. The things? There was no thing. They literally came out and told us they weren't going to have them this week. Oh, they did. They literally came out. He stood right there and he said, "We're not going to have the box graphic." You're mad. And I said, Fine, Gus. You're mad today. I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a little. Sh- boo. You said hey guys, you mad guys, I want to report that Gus didn't fill me in on the box not mad. being there thing. So you're, I think he's responsible. So wait, uh, Gus, are you mad or you're you not bad? I'm, I'm not mad. I'm a little high strung. Okay. Why? We got a lot going on today. It's, it's been a long day. There's it's a lot happening. Oh, what happened? Did you have a bad thing? No, no, I've been filming all day. Uh, I've had a lot of stuff going on. Why are you so bright? You pasty? Why am I so bright? <laughs> We're brighter today. This is the monitor. They always tell me it's the monitor. Oh, I always good. look on mine. I right. always feel like I'm washed out and red somehow. So this is, I, I pulled my laptop out and I've got it backwards. You this broke is, it! This is my favorite thing about this laptop. I, I was confused because I looked at your screen and it was just the back of your monitor. Is that so I, other people could see what you're typing and you No, can't? so I can like go smoosh and put it in tablet mode and then I can use it like that. So you flip it around. But it has this cool like mag lock. You like the sound. Yeah. All right, do it by the mic. There's been a trend on Reddit, by the way, of cool sounds. Oh, yeah. They just put up a World War II uh, air siren, air raid siren, w- warming up. To fuck it's cool now. Seven no. years ago, we yeah. don't want to hear that. <laughs> Not so cool back then, dude. I didn't know this. I, so you know, Flint, Michigan, which is having all the problems with their, problems with their water. Are they? How would that still, sound cool? <laughs> still, that's really cool. They. Uh, I have relatives in Flint, specifically in Grand Blanc, Michigan. I didn't fucking know this, but their weather sirens are old air raid sirens. They sound exactly like that. What kind of weather sirens do they like? What do they have weather sirens for? I don't know. But all I know is they were using them one morning, testing them. And I fucking woke up to air raid sirens. It's the 80s, but I assumed nuclear bombs were coming. Right. So. It's like the equivalent of listening to the radio in your car and hearing uh, sirens and honks and brake screeches on the illegal. radio. Should be I illegal. Fucking, I, I don't understand how people are allowed to do or, that. Or police sirens, and you start looking around. Like, yeah. Where, where are they? Yeah, well, police sirens. Making that's you worse. A, yeah. Making you aware. So we have a lot. Once again, the person who doesn't drive. We have, a, with we have a lot of stuff to get through <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> Um, I want to get through one of them right away. I fixed my laptop. Thank just you. So we, know. We, were, we were all. <laughs> I'm just wrapping things up for you guys. You tied up loose ends for you. Thank uh, you. This is episode 498 of the podcast. So 500 by the, the math, I think, is two weeks away. And uh, we're going to do. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Think. Gavin? You want to double okay. check that? Yeah. Is that okay? So that's July 9th. <laughs> and we're going to have a live event uh, July 9th for RTP 500. Uh, if you can't come, but we're gonna if, have a live event. We're just gonna get together and talk in the Austin half. area, or you are gonna be in the Austin area around then. You can visit that Bitly link right there, and you can buy tickets. So this is the actual announcement. If you're watching this live, we haven't posted this anywhere. This is your opportunity to go buy a ticket now Do before it. anybody else knows. If you're a first podcast, member, thank you for watching live. Bit. This L-Y. is your chance to go. So should we just Slash. talk about nothing for the next two minutes? Now listen. Now listen. Should we yeah. not read it out for the audio podcast? But they're not. Bit.ly slash Capital R, capital T, <laughs> capital P, five zero zero. You're welcome. Uh, we it's Casper.com slash T. <laughs> uh, that we address. we had to charge a little bit of money just to make sure people show up and don't um, just what get are a we charging. So we're charging five hundred pennies for five hundred episodes. Oh, so, so five dollars? No, five hundred pennies. We're okay. very exact about this. In a jaw, you have to send us five hundred pennies. Why didn't we charge five hundred dollars? Because that would have been better. So, so listen, if it's five bucks, here's what I would ask. Of people, our beloved first members who are all over this wonderful planet, don't buy a ticket if you know you're not going to come. Like, right? Yeah, I mean, there's some just, people who just will sometimes buy it to get the receipt and like it's a fun memento. But we'll we'll well we won't send you anything. But please don't one, do that. What don't if do one it. person bought all of them? Gavin, yeah, let's not even let's erase this part of the podcast. Would <laughs> uh, it be great? If we did a podcast as one dude. That would actually be that. kind of funny. That would be pretty funny. Just We've done that clapping. before. Who do we do a podcast for one dude? Well, we went to LA that one time. Oh, yeah, that horrible <laughs> festival that you took us to. Oh, yeah. No, there were two. Were oh, there? sorry. There was the other <laughs> bloke. Normally, I'd never badmouth an event, but we're far enough away from it that I don't even remember what it was. It was a podcast Wasn't festival. Wasn't it like some network event? Yeah. No, it was a podcast festival in a, ho- in a hotel in Hollywood. Wasn't it like for podcasts for podcasters? It was, yeah, it was I a was podcast doing the thing. vlog at that point in time because we, we, we I vlogged us going to lunch. You know, Ellie, were you there for it? She- She's, we got, there she's got something else. When we too. had the horrible uh, Rooster Teeth podcast with like four people in the audience. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. There. So we had three people because we had. Um, so I had kind of a, a throwaway <laughs> thing that I said last week. Last I week? wish. Yeah. Where I said that I, I I thought it would be interesting to eat an ostrich egg. Is See, it like the 24? Problem. So eggs? only you should have to eat right. the ostrich egg. This is the problem with this podcast. People say things. Why are we constantly saying things on the podcast? So, uh, 
Gus, we brought you a, uh, a nice, delicious ostrich egg, fre freshly prepared. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> oh, why is an enormous egg so gross? And in Texas, you know, we like to serve it with the uh, pico de gallo and tortillas. It's so. heavy. Uh, Watch out. Uh, where's the camera? Oh, it's up there. Yeah. It looks like oh an egg threw gosh. up. That's one egg. Yeah. That is one egg. One, yeah, why is so, there so much pepper yeah, so on it? I, I learned uh, uh, one ostrich egg is about 24 regular eggs. Did you taste test this before? <laughs> I just had a little bite. How was it? It's, it's, it's a very rich, this is, uh, dense, dense egg. This is Patrick Pope, everybody, by the way. Patrick Pope with the lab. Yeah, nice to meet you. Now let's talk about the lab. Not the lab. Uh, so, uh, so bon appetit, gentlemen. Oh, enjoy. thank you. Cool. Uh, uh, enjoy, can, guys. Can you bring so, any pieces of the Do we have any big can pieces we get of the, the show? Yeah. Isn't there another one? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, my throat's making noises already. Could you crack an ostrich egg into your mouth and suck it down? Stop it. <laughs> Wait till you feel this thing. Uh, we made the mistake of, like, handling the actual egg earlier in the day. You have salmonella? And it, the, the shell can't be broken. Like, you can't even crack it on the side of a table. Bullshit. You've got to use an instrument to do it. Bullshit. Anybody else want to try, anybody else wanna try some Gus, egg? why don't you ostrich go ahead? Or, I'll try some. When, I mean, why are you so grossed out? When are you ever going to get a chance to eat a fucking ostrich egg? I don't care about eating an ostrich egg. <laughs> I have regular old, when eggs. You're, when you're old and gross like me, you're just yeah. chasing new experiences. Okay. <laughs> you've seen it up in the world. You're like, yeah, give me some fucked up stuff I'll to wait eat. another 35 years. Have you, you ever had an ostrich feel? before? Mm -mm. That's the shell. That's the shell. Oh, you shit. It, it looks fake. Should we play catch the egg? This is the egg. Please be careful. Oh well, I now mean, it takes a hammer to open. Now it, do this, so I Gavin. Think fine. Watch what I do. Do it, you mimic this action that I'm about to do. take the? I can't do it well, actually because no. it's going to flip drain. it upside down. Just slowly turn it over, like. Oh, it's like grippy on the inside. It's it. like, <laughs> yep, it like sticks oh. to the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. It's How good. is it? How it's, much? It's going long. No, stop it! Don't no, throw that egg at me. Throw the egg. It's just like, I'm not gonna throw the. Don't throw that fucking it's just egg. An egg. You don't catch the egg. Okay, okay, here. Well, Barbara, hold this. Oh, oh right, God. Yeah. No, God, please. If you fucking wing this at me. <laughs> okay. Do a real throw, not a British throw. Did someone say don't throw it? Three okay. points. Hi. Oh, got it. That was wicked. It's coming back. Oh. <laughs> that, okay, that's enough of that. That's, oh, let me hang on to that for you. Yeah. Well, go long at least. <laughs> <laughs> Eric spent a thousand dollars. You should try it. All right, I'll give it a shot. What is that? What these little tins are for? Yeah. It sounds like so put some slop in a tin for me. It sounds like a um, what's that? Like glass almost. It's hollow like the moon. It's there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is bigger than a stomach, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it depends on the stomach. You I can guess. R fill your entire stomach with egg. Oh, God. oh, dude. Imagine. Okay, how about this? If you swallowed an entire liquid ostrich egg and then Go got ahead. in a hot tub. Would it? Would you throw it up as like one bowl of cooked egg? Oh, you'd be like a poached egg. You'd be yeah. the poaching thing. Yeah, that'd be wicked. Gus, please don't ever say you want to eat other disgusting things on the podcast ever again. It's not disgusting. Is, is that a clean? Is that a clean fork? Yeah. Okay. But would would you? It's eat? literally just an egg. Yeah, but like, does a duck egg or a goat egg? <laughs> not goat egg. Goat egg. <laughs> <laughs> goat egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a goat egg next. Dude, right, here we go. Uh, I want a goat egg now. Eric, find me a <laughs> fucking goat egg. <laughs> it's good. Uh, I was thinking about stuff and stuff. That is not bad, Patrick. My compliment. Yeah. How many it, different types excellent. of eggs are there in the it's world? It's really good, I have think. Have you sucked one of these forks? What? Have I sucked a fork? No, it's <laughs> I one got of no these in your mouth. Oh, they're, no, they're, no, all, no. they're all I'm clean. In, I'm in now. You want this? So here's the problem that we have today. Today we had Monday meeting. I'm trying to write Pepper. I don't know who forever for Monday. We call it Monday meeting, but now it's all hands meeting. It's not actually every Monday, but it falls on Mondays, so we still sometimes call it Monday meeting. Oh, okay. So good. Rooster Teeth every Monday will will get lunch for everybody at the company. Which, by the way, what the fuck is going on at today's all hands meeting? We had our new employees stand up. We have 45 new employees today. What? I was filming, so I missed it. 45 new employees stood up. Well, that's since the last all hands. Far too There's many. There's still 45 new employees. They stood up and said hello. From 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 day one, two thousand three, it took us eight years to get to forty five employees. I asked for an official head count today. We're at three hundred and eighty. As That's a company, a lot of people. it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Anyway, so we did that today, but we got food for all those people. And I guess because it's so many people, we can't actually get good food. <laughs> so <laughs> we got chili dogs today. They're all right. Like well, I mean, they're Airlines good, but they're not good for you. Is what lunches. I'm oh, okay. no, this egg's actually pretty good. That's really good. It's a yeah. seasoning. But I, I think it's the seasoning. Yeah, it is. I think Patrick they cooked it very well, seasoned it very, very deliciously. I really want to crack the other egg open. Do it. No. Yeah. Is it cruel to do it? 
Are you gonna keep it on your desk or something, Eric? What are you gonna do with it? The, I don't think we we talked about how thick the shell is. Could you punch that? Well, you, it's you, not just the shell, Gus. It's that inner membrane. That membrane. Like when you crack an egg, a chicken egg, it does have that tiny it. little membrane on the inside. This one, you actually have to work at it to puncture you have that to, membrane. I think, I think hit it with a hammer. I think to get some it people hit it with a hammer. I think Patrick used the back end of a knife. Do you think you could just, crack like, it? But that it. took the shell off, and then the membrane was separate. Right, that yeah, was a separate I, opening. I, I could hear him cracking it when I was sitting here before we started the podcast. And I walked over, and he was taking the shell off, and the membrane was still intact. And it looks like... The movie oh. Aliens, like where the face huggers yeah. come out. Yeah, we should deshell the egg entirely and just hold the membrane. I mean, to me, it looks like and a dinosaur egg. The, yeah, the, it looks the, like a dinosaur the egg. The weirdest yeah. thing to me was the texture on the egg. Like when you think about chicken eggs, how they're smooth. Can I headbutt that and crack it? No. Good you know what? I gotta say, I gotta say that like if Marcus made that, we would tell him it doesn't oh. look realistic, Try right? Break that with your head. You could get. Like, like it looks like shards of it looks like shell in your head. Three D printer. You want me to, you yeah, want to try butt nut, it with my head? Not the egg. I'm gonna get my hair cut. Dude, by but the way. put on your head. Oh, you're gonna hurt your head. I'm gonna get my hat, right? Wait, let's, I'll do a lot. I got a hard head, Barb. Yeah. Okay, Front go. fronts of heads are hard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so fucking dumb. Like, I rattled my teeth. <laughs> you cracked it though. Yeah. Look at that. I know. Cracked my head. That's my skull <laughs> making that noise. All right, you try, Barbara. No! <laughs> <laughs> I like my head. So I like my my the, uh, brain. So we got chili dogs okay. today. Chili dogs. We it's so much stuff today. We got chili dogs for lunch. We're chili dogs. Then every Monday, Gus is so gracious and uses part of the budget to buy everyone dinner. Is it? But it's not me. Should it's, I give Gus credit for that? No, Who gets no, credit no, for that? Patrick or someone else. Well, then how come you affect the pizza choice? That I, we get? I keep how many times <laughs> we have to have this fucking conversation. Nobody else likes that pizza. We've established this a thousand times. So today we got fried chicken sandwiches from a really good local place that we love. So then there's these chili dogs, fried chicken sandwiches. Then we find out we're getting this gigantic ostrich egg because Gus can't keep his fucking mouth shut. And then on top of that- anybody else want ostrich egg? Anybody want to try? We already had a plan, which you probably have noticed from earlier, but we already had a plan today that today, Gus, you're off stage for this huge announcement. Today- Wait, we've got- Is podcast (laughs) Sunday, Monday. So we're doing Sundays today. The grand tradition of food podcast. And is this every year now on this day? It's got to be. On this <sighs> week. It'll be the first podcast after summer starts. And then to top this off, at the, after this, we're going uh, we're going out to dinner to celebrate Gavin's 30th birthday because he hey. hasn't been around for a while. Yeah. Happy birthday, by the way, Gavin. Thanks. It was so, a month ago. We're just going to die. <laughs> we're going to go into like a coma after eating all this food. Why don't we hit up some barbecue on the way home? Let's bring the other ostrich egg to the restaurant and say, what can you do with this? <laughs> He, can you put, can you fake an Australian accent? We'll say you're from Australia, and you... I'll figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> ostriches don't live in Australia. <laughs> oh, that's right. I always say that. I always say that. I, I got that in my head when I was a kid. Like he has to be Aust- Australian. No, I got that in my head when I was a kid that ostriches are from Australia, and that's I actually a... learned that on the podcast. Australia, Australians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm wrong. Sorry. They're from Africa. But you should right? still pretend to be so. from Australia. They're from New Jersey. Why not? Right. Sure. Why not? More importantly. Let's get to some ice cream. Wait, yeah. also, we're Australian scamming. accent would be way less racist. Oh my god. <gasps> Holy I said it and they shit. Just, like, came out with wow. it. Wow. See, you say stuff, we do it. Thanks. Oh my Holy god, god. this I like. This suggestion. These say Mexican, I find that very racist. <laughs> Handed it right to you. So, what we got? Mex. Mex. Is it all like Mexican vanilla? I assume and... this is Mexican vanilla, Belgian chocolate. Oh, Belge. And Oreo. Belge me. Oh. Thank you. I guess all of these are mine. You know, we're only four people, right? Oh, because it's Mexican vanilla. Sunday. So, we got Mexican Ooh. vanilla. What else? Belgian chocolate and Oreo? Yep. So we can triple up on our flavors? Yeah, buddy. Do we have to separate <laughs> the larger Mexican ones from the smaller Mexican ones? Is that the way that works? <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? That's a, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Too soon to make jokes about that. It's unfucking believable, dude. You gotta talk about it. Listen, I mean, did we talk about it? Did you guys talk about it last week or? No. Has it not happened since last week? No, I think it, ha- it happened since then. What a fucking nightmare to live through. Right? Yeah. Can you imagine that? Being, being separated? It's, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't even understand what that's like, what's that like, what that's like to experience. Which they've, re- they've since rescinded the order, but that doesn't mean that anyone's been reunited in any way. In fact, yeah, I was hearing they, today that- uh, They said they have a plan to do it, they just don't know the timeline or how they're gonna do it. We're talking- like, You of, don't have a fucking plan then. Those are the two things that matter. We're talking, of course, about down to oh. border. Unfortunately, is, not- are all the camps in Texas? I Gus? believe so. Yeah. Uh, we actually, when we were going to, last week when I was going to VidCon, there was actually talk about us going down there because we were all just so fed up with this. And we're we were just gonna like get pulling the, the walls down. Yeah, me and Jeff and Matt and Gus were all just going to get in the car and go down there. 
and just start filming stuff because we didn't know what else to do. And uh, John, as we were working through that, I was about to cancel my trip to VidCon. I, ne I don't think I've ever canceled an event appearance ever. Well, especially because of political going on. No, I've just never done it, not even for being sick or anything like that. Yeah. And so this is I was I trying to work through the language of how I was going to do that. But then they, you know, Trump signed this order to rescind he, the order that didn't exist. He had no power to fix this. He had no power to address this issue. Until, until he, he signed an executive order that undid it. I don't even. It like, undid it in a shitty way. But I, it's not. It leaves the door open for further abuse down the road. And I'm going to sound like typical liberal overthinking things, but I almost don't want to use Trump's name in it because I feel like this should be an issue that transcends any kind of polar politics. Yeah. Like if kids are being separated from their family members, everyone should be concerned about that. Right. Didn't he? Everyone should be able to drop any pretense of. This side or that side, and this just needs to be fixed. Well, wasn't it also that there was like some um, event that was held where they had victims of people who were murdered by illegal immigrants come speak? That was something that they had recently. And then, yeah, yeah, they did. But where's the the event where they have people who were killed by white people, school shooters, or whatever it is, come speak? Oh, right. It's just like a clear demonstration of racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the uh, Huckabee put just a tweet. Cherry, cherry picking what it is that you want to be outraged about. Yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up on the border, you know, for years. My family comes from Mexico. So I think um, it's weird to me to see that. Like, I, I spent so long growing up on the border, and it was something that at the time was, I mean, it was, it was an issue. People talked about it, but it was, we, we never reached the point where we were like, let's start separating people. Uh, from each other, start separating children from their parents. It was like, at least you, they're still people. They're still, you want to treat them humanely. Yeah, but then you're, they're treating right. them like human fucking criminals and animals. Right, and then I saw people's counter arguments were, these migrant children are being treated better than our own American children. It's like, well, that's a, the takeaway for me then, is we should be treating our own citizens better. Yeah. Like, wh what a weird... Thing to say and what a weird defense to try to to take in there the was, whole situation There's some quote I saw and I'm probably gonna say it incorrectly, but it was like no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land Yeah, that's right. Yeah for so, anybody whatever they're fleeing is So much worse. Yeah, so much worse Which is hard to believe because everyone is like seeing the situation that they're in down there and it's terrible And I agree with you Gus. It's like people will sometimes say well. This, well, what about this? It's like yeah, that's bad too. Let's fix that. Let's yeah. go and what initially I remember there was a uh, uh, talk about this uh, authority already existed. Like this was a policy that was in place with previous administrations. And specifically, it was people were coming back and saying, well, this was the Obama administration had the same policy. It wasn't enforced, it turns out, but people were saying that to me. And I just came back with, okay, great. Let's impeach Obama too. I don't care. It's yeah. like, why Why do you it's, think if you say the word Obama to me, I'm going to go like, oh, was? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's still it's wrong. Fine. It's in still the end. wrong. Yeah. It's still wrong. It transcends that. I don't... I don't care. It's like I don't sit around thinking about Obama all day, and it's like I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to protect his legacy. I what I gotta figure out is a way to protect these little kids who are getting yanked away from their parents. And yeah, if they're coming here and they're, those aren't their parents, that's something else we can fix. You know, I mean, yeah. those are still human beings coming in here. Right. It's like we have this luxury of being in the United States. We have a luxury of enjoying a very high standard of living compared to the rest of the world. Let's. Take care of people who are less fortunate than us. Right. I think even instead of treating them like monsters, even even people in our own country, like going back to the thing the the, the those people were saying, like let's take care of people who who need our help, people who are fleeing violence or you know some kind of persecution in their own country. God, we have enough persecution in our own fucking country these days. But um, let's just be good neighbors. How also, about that? Also, it's like you know. There's been a couple of things that have been coming down the pipeline for a really long time. Like climate change is something that people. Have been talking about for a very long time, and it was kind of like, oh, well, you don't see any evidence of it, so it's it's not it doesn't affect me in my daily life, so I'm not going to talk about it, I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> but over time, it's like, oh yeah, we're having, starting to have serious problems because of climate change, and we should have done something about it sooner. I do think we're headed down, and this is not to change the subject, but we're heading down a pathway where the concept of what is work is going to change. I think it's definitely going to think change in my kids' lifetime. With the amount of computer automation that we have, I mean, if you even look, I just got back from VidCon. If you look at all the issues that we're having with these mass scale systems and the way the computers are, you know, the algorithm that you always talk about on YouTube, the way that's doling out information, processing advertisements, everything like that causes huge problems. We're having these huge bumps in the road. 
And eventually it's going to get into like people just aren't going to have these jobs. You know, these less and less jobs are going to exist. Somebody on uh, Twitter sent me this thing of, of a video where someone had like one of these fakes where they used my voice, but it was a computer generated thing that was me saying something. Oh, and it's like, yeah, I can just, I can just, but it looked like live action. Like a deep fake. Like, like a de it was a deep fake is what it was. But it, it was computer generated. I was like, holy cow, that's, that's horrifying. But the fact that a computer can make that is really fascinating, you know? It's a, it's a marvel. And that's going to change so much stuff. terrifying. Yeah. Like autonomous cars are going to wipe out transportation, you know? Everyone who drives a truck, drives a, drives a car professionally, we can see where that's about to go away. It's about to go away. Have you played Detroit? No, I haven't, but I it's watched like Ashley play it. Very similar, and like, and you'll sometimes pick up a newspaper in the game and read future headlines, and it's terrifyingly scary. Of like, you, it's totally relatable to now. Is it a good game? Should I play it? Uh, I'm not very far into it. It's fun. <clears throat> it's like a story game. It's a, I mean, it's very story driven. Mm -hmm. If you want like interactive narrative, uh, it doesn't take that long to finish. I think I probably finished it in 12, 15 hours somewhere in that neighborhood. Bishop from Aliens is in it. So is uh, Clancy Brown's in it, right? I think he played the guard in Shawshank Redemption. This guy. Oh yeah, he's it. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you if you saw him, you would recognize him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I I'm remember, I don't like, remember his name, but I, I he popped up a screen. It's like, oh, that's that's that guy. But this issue of of I think this what I'm, point I was trying to make with this is like as we come back around, this issue of who gets benefits from what. Eventually, I think like even Elon Musk now is talking about universal basic income. It's becoming a thing. And it's like, then the question is, who's going to pay for that? Which I think is at the heart of a lot of these immigration issues is there's right. the concept. They talk about the crime because that's a scare tactic. Um, but the often it's talked about burden on resources and things like that. And who are these people? Whereas, you know, most of the hardest working families I've ever met in my life have been first generation immigrants anywhere. People who have the wherewithal to pick up and go to a totally different country that probably speaks a different language. Those are very motivated people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think as you know, as we go forward, there's gonna there's gonna be a continuing issue. It's not just gonna be traditionally, you know, underprivileged people. It's gonna be a lot of fucking people. I think it's this younger generation, I think is already already dealing with it. Because they're getting out of college and they they have the old world system of going to college where they rack up a ton of debt, but now they're getting out and there's no jobs available to them. Mm. And it's not all because the baby boomers aren't retiring. There's other things at play and we're just not seeing them yet. That's what I think. So I think there's going to be bigger issues that cascade through. I also think the immigration thing, I feel like I'm talking a lot. The uh, immigration thing, it basically boils down to, do you think it's a crime? And I think there's, that's, that's the big discrepancy. What? Some people think if you try to come to this country, that it's a crime. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I felt like a lot of recent political moves are this anti-globalization effort, right? Like we had seen before the unification of the EU and through NAFTA and kind of creating a free trade zone in North America, kind of trying to disable and tear, tear these borders down to allow people and jobs to move freely. But I felt like after 2016, it was really like a referendum on globalization and a pullback to nationalism, like trying to close those borders and reinforce it. And I don't know what caused that reaction? I felt like things were going fine. Um, maybe just that loss of identity, the national identity that people are looking for. Yeah. I, I can't quite put my finger on it. Like the whole... Even Brexit. Yeah, Brexit thing is what I was going to say. It's crazy to me. Like I think people who looked at that didn't believe the spin that the UK was going to save money by leaving the EU. And now here we are, what, two years out? And we just had the figures come out, what was it last week? Where it's like, yeah. oh no, we've... We've end, UK's ended up paying more, pay more because of Brexit than they would have paid to have to stay in the EU. It's like right, the nobody really thought that aren't the numbers were going to add up, right? Aren't they still doing both though. Do you know, Gav? Like are, doing both until they leave, aren't they still paying some of these agreements that they have? Well, yeah, they're not. They haven't officially left, so they're still on the hook for that. Oh my gosh, yeah. so they're doubling down at this point. Yeah, so in that interim. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I still don't know if they've fully hammered out how the exit's going to happen. Yeah, they still haven't figured Someone's fully figured all that out. Someone's going to come with a giant saw and just... While we're talking about globalization, Barb, you should be excited about developments in your home country. Should I be? Yeah, a couple of immigrants on the couch over here. What's yeah, happening in Canada? Talking about legal weed? Legal weed in Canada! Legal weed! What's the story there? Has that been a thing for a long time in Canada, trying to push for that? I think so. Um, and it's it's been decriminalized, I believe, for a while. Uh, but not legal in the same way it is. What does that mean, decriminalized? I've always wondered. Does that mean it's like... I think they'll give you a ticket. It's not something that they'll necessarily you wouldn't get arrested take you into to jail for. Is that mean criminal mean jail? Because here it's like some states it's legal, but federally, like nationwide, it's still a crime in some way. But Canada, 
does it have like the state system or is it just one law for the whole country? I believe I actually well, they don't have, know. They have provinces that <laughs> like like we have states like Yeah. Correct I, me if I'm wrong. Quebec seems to be a more conservative province. Typically. Yeah. yeah. And and so I mean who knows what can happen. Like I believe in Vancouver, even I think prostitution is <coughs> legal already in or maybe it's just decriminalized in Vancouver. Decriminalized prostitution. Decriminalized. Yeah, I believe it was like province specific, if I recall correctly, but this um, new development is nationwide. Somebody in chat tell us, somebody who's a smart political science. I haven't been keeping up with the, the weed laws in Canada. The, uh, the uh, Republican Party in Texas and the leading uh, Democratic candidate for senator who's going to oppose Ted Cruz have both come out and said – uh, they're pushing for legal cannabis in Texas. In Texas. Which I'm actually really surprised. I thought I would be long gone before that happens. You think so? Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner because Texas does have a reputation of being a southern state and therefore very conservative as well. Mm -hmm. But actually, the only thing I've noticed in my many, many years of living in Texas is this crazy independent streak. Like, you will not tell us what to do. We are doing our own thing and that's it. So mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised that Texas hasn't Done it yet. Well, nothing else, just looking around at the uh, tax revenue that other states are right. enjoying. I, was say from they, it. I imagine they looked at California and saw the benefit that they were getting from it. Agriculture mm -hmm. for the economy. Also, think what it would do to the Texas also, border what, for I mean, drug trafficking. That's what I was, that's, and then that's what I was going to say yeah. is then, you know, if you're taking all this money away from cartels, then what happens to cartel activity along the border? What, what happens to they start trading and stuff like soap? Well, well nice does, things. does it become bubble bar. less <laughs> dangerous for people to live in Mexico and Central America? And then are they not trying to leave that violence and come to the United States? I think a lot of, a lot of this stuff is connected. Yeah. Well, it's once again, I wonder, it's like you can't n nothing operates in a vacuum. So it's like, let's say tomorrow they pass a law and that day it was instituted where it's like Portugal, where there are no drug laws, where it's everything is legal, period. Um, and so then, you know, pharmaceutical companies or whoever can start selling, you know, or RJ Reynolds can start selling tobacco like, uh, or, or tobacco like marijuana, uh, cigarettes and packs, um, and those kinds of things. Then what would happen in places that are now, that's where they're making, they're making their money from illegal drug trade. Mm -hmm. Like that money would stop, but I feel like things like kidnapping and those other things would then soar dramatically. <laughs> Just to make up for the crime. Yeah, they're, they're not going to make not up for a lost, right now. lost money. Yeah. yeah, lost money. The cartel's like, yeah, we can't, suddenly nobody wants to buy our drugs, so well, there's, there's other ways to make money. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think, think we actually see a surge yeah, in other countries mean, of violence, especially in Central America. I feel like we would. Yeah, I don't know. You're right. Nothing operates in a vacuum. If you take that away, then yeah. what is the, the other shoe? Like, what, what happens on the other side? Man. Yeah, what it's a world. little terrifying. It's complicated. What a world, dude. Or they could all just get high and chill out. Who knows? Although, if they're not doing that already, then... <laughs> <It's> <laughs> They've already got the drugs. They already have the drugs. Does, does weed go bad? I'm sure it does. I don't know. It's I a good question. it could get dry, probably. Hmm. If, I mean, if it's left out. Does alcohol go bad? Does Doesn't it? seem like it does. I bet it does eventually. I mean, I think like beer and stuff could go bad. Like for parties, I'll buy a bunch of booze and then nine months later, I'll have still have like that much vodka in the bottom of a bottle. And I'm like, oh, that's probably still good. I imagine right? things like vodka and, and like hard liquors and stuff are fine. But I don't know if like, I feel like if, if it's a, like a liquid you can clean stuff with, it's probably not going to go bad. <laughs> yeah, but you don't drink the <laughs> alcohol that liquid. you clean with. Or freeze it and well, it not freeze. Like pour in a wound. Oh, okay. I'm not going to pour milk in a wound, probably. <laughs> Ostrich yolk oh, or anything like that. Gross. Ashley and I, she has this one beer that she loves. It's a... Uh, She's already there. She's Shiner, <laughs> Shiner Christmas beer. And we've had one of those bottles or two of those bottles for, I think, like two years now. They changed the label on the beer, on a seasonal beer. So it's at least I, two years old at I, this point, I right? I think Ash? beer lasts like two yeah. or three years when bottled. Didn't we find it in a what filing cabinet? Yeah, it was in a filing cabinet. Oh, was oh. it filed under B? <laughs> <laughs> or C? Is it beer or Christmas? Yeah, it was holiday. P for Brady. Is Barbara when we floated the river and Jack bought cans of beer that he found in his house that were from like four years earlier I think and I had was dust there. all over him? Oh, my, this, like, this fucking guy. <laughs> Look. <laughs> this fucking guy. Were you want to talk about old enough. beer? Yeah, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that card. Of, we've talked about this on the podcast. <laughs> I served Gus a <clears throat> beer one time. That had been in a cooler for a while. It was in a bottle, in a cooler. What's in a, a while? It, well, it had been in there long enough to where when I popped the cap off, there was a rust ring around the top of the, yeah. the bottle. I thought you were going to say there was like a shriek. <laughs> like a woman's Spirits scream. emerged ah! from it. 
and then they took our jobs. Did you get mad? <laughs> it was like one of those ostrich eggs. It came out looking goopy like Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? And everybody goes, oh, just pour it in a glass. You'll be fine. So, Ashley like, and I pour it in a glass. So I poured it in a glass and I drank it. it Ashley and I have an amazing thing going on right now. Let, let me read this before you get to your Why? amazing thing. You gonna commercialize my cute little story? I wanna remind everyone this episode of the Rescue <laughs> Podcast is brought to you by Nerdificent. Okay, it's a new podcast from comedians Danny Fernandez and Ife Wadiwe. It's a weekly deep dive into nerdy subjects you didn't know you wanted to know about. Uh, whether it's the mind expanding frontiers of virtual reality or the surprisingly exciting modern renaissance of tabletop games, they'll take you from the origins into the surprising future of each subject. <laughs> it's a fancy way to say they go down a bottomless Google rabbit hole and tell you about the coolest stuff they find. Don't miss out on Nerdificent. Catch it every week for great comedy and information. Some of the things they talked about recently are VR, Comic-Con, Marvel Cinematic Universe, tabletop games, stuff in that vein. The uh, show comes out weekly on Tuesdays, after us chumps. Uh, it's produced by How Stuff Works Network's comedy division responsible for the Daily Zeitgeist and Culture Kings. Listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for sponsoring this episode of our podcast. So we advertise a different podcast on this podcast? It's a little weird. So, so after you're done listening to our podcast, then you can go listen to that podcast. Well, that should be an equal trade. They should advertise us. You're right. They should. Sam on Twitter sent us photos of him standing on ostrich eggs to oh, okay, demonstrate. Someone's got to stand on the egg. What? Someone's got to stand on the egg. Yeah, well, he's standing on a few. So there's a distribution of weight across I, a couple eggs. Yeah. He looks I think like he's I'm standing on a little stack of eggs. Clearly somewhere in Australia. <laughs> he found some eggs. Well, yeah, because he's upside down then. There's yeah, there, less weight. there's a, an abundance there. So we have, uh, so this is now we're in the middle of our fourth meal of the day, about to go to our fifth we meal. We didn't really talk about our Sundays. How would you get? What'd you eat? I just did Mexican vanilla with this, uh, what is that, peanut butter crumble shit stuff? Is it Butterfinger? Butterfinger? Heath bar. Heath, Heath, Heath bar? bar. Oh, Heath bar, so good. I didn't know that existed until butter. I moved to, uh, I, what? No, no, that's, uh, toffee. Heath is toffee, which is basically just like, I thought it was caramel, peanut right? butter. Doesn't it smell like peanut butter? Caramel? Yeah. Caramel. Caramel. Caramel? Caramel. Caramel. There's an A in there. Hey, Gavin? Ashley, what, what is the name of the shark in Jaws? Bruce. <laughs> there are, aren't they all named Bruce? Oh, Isn't every shark named Bruce? It. It's actually, she's right, it's Bruce. Oh, it was like the behind the scenes name, right? Bruce yeah, lives. that's the name of the shark. It's Bruce. I mean, we were talking before. Look at you, baby. That, you actually yeah. answered way better than Look I thought. You. Yeah, baby. I was just doing my Finding Nemo. <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day, and they were having an argument with me, telling me the shark. This, the shark's name was Jaws. Was yeah. Like, the movie's called Jaws. He's got Jaws. It's not a shark called Jaws. Who names their shark Jaws? <laughs> that's, that's what Gus I'm going to get a fucking yeah. shark and name a Jaws, despite y'all. What I said, what, did you just, think it was Jaws? No. You're defensive. Yeah, you did. Look at your face. Uh, I just like the name Jaws for a shark now. It's cute. It's cute. Sharks don't get names though. So they're, they're just sharks. We are we are in the process right now of trying to name a new animal because Ashley and I have a new pet. <gasps> we got. Did you get a kitten? No, we got oh. something even cooler than a kitten. A dog. We have okay. a squirrel. We have a pet squirrel that now lives in our doorway. You have vermin. It's not vermin. Like I, got, I got security cam footage of it. It's, it's the funny. cutest thing ever. It's a rodent. It's a baby and it needs Oh, a... there he is. Come on. Tell oh, me that guy's nice. Okay. Shit. He's tiny. cute as fuck. Look at his little flipping head. I, ha I have a name for you. Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> Can we name him Jaws? I would love to do that. Jaws the squirrel? That's great. Nipples. So we uh, we go a little uh, we, close to nipples. <laughs> Gus, you would hate this. We put nipples, like apples. come here. What? We put apples out for him and everything like that. And he just mm. sits there and he like... We put a, obviously put a little security camera right next to it, and he just sits there and chews on his little apples all day, and we watch him from work and stuff. He chews it with his jaw. With his jaw. Jaws. I, jaws I saw, Formidable jaws. I, I saw someone else on the internet who maybe likes squirrels as much as you do. I saw someone who, they saw a squirrel in their front yard who had this weird, really long, misshapen tooth. Oh, yeah, the saber tooth yeah, squirrel. It was, well, it was like, I guess, normally with, with squirrels, their teeth don't ever stop growing, but this squirrel's jaw was slightly misaligned, so... It was never, that tooth was never chewing on anything, so it was like really long and almost touching its eye. Yeah. So she decided she wanted to do something about it. So she caught the squirrel in a blanket and using some like really sharp cuticle cutters, she like trimmed its tooth down. Oh, yeah. Fuck that lady. God. Uh, the it, like, why not just pull the tooth? Like, pull it? Uh, instead of trimming a tooth? Uh, you know how much that hurt? No, you it was trim a rabbit's tooth. Oh. It, it was, it, that was not the photo I found, but yeah, that's very similar where yeah. she, um, she just like trimmed it down and then re-released the squirrel so that it could go uh, back out and live its life. Yeah, apparently there are some animals where if their teeth grow under, they can like go into their own brains and stuff. Yo, ram's horns, right? What? Rams? Oh, they like poke themselves in the head? Yeah, they get like stuck in their own head or uh, 
<laughs> an ibix. Ibix. Or... They can scratch their own asshole yeah, with their horns. Stretch when they get high. I want that. Them. Why can't human? Enough? Enough? At what point do that? you die from that? Like it will go into the from brain. having horns. It's probably like day two for me. But it, like, I would it'll say. be so slow. Like it'd be on the edge of your brain, and you'd probably be acting weird. But your brain. Point... Your brain could like rewire around it eventually, yeah. right? Yeah, I wonder if it'd be like getting shot in the head, but it would take like a year to go through. When you would die, would you die at three months? Yeah, like would your brain yeah. adjust or uh, like the makeup? Was it was it how like an X Men movie where it, like the bullets like stopped on his head like that? What was it? What was the power that did that? It was Magneto. Magneto, it was did Magneto it? Yeah. Stopped it? yeah, but if it just slowly bored its way through, that'd be horrible. Would you be gone in two weeks? Well, I would. I would think it would be really convenient if the horns grew back then into your skull. But the first part of the brain they hit was the part that grows horns, and then it just stops. Like, <laughs> that'd be really like that'd be like winning the the horn, the deformed horn lottery. Wait, but this, we have a sad story about the squirrel, the origin of the squirrel. Jaws. So he's a little squirrel. I don't know if you know. He's, he's, a, little, he's a little, he's a little squirrel. He's, he's a little smish. Little like hamster squirrel. And we saw, we saw. He's a black squirrel, which is also weird for people yeah, who don't. Saw, I, I noticed in that video, it's like has like a black head. That's really rare for Austin. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever uh, seen black squirrels. I believe black squirrels are in Canada. I don't know if they're in the United States. So it's super weird yeah. that we have black squirrels here. We noticed the black squirrel. Yeah. Uh, so we we had one living in our yard for a while. It's huge, like this big, like yeah. big old squirrel that's black on the front and brown on the back. Yep. Like someone took the squirrels and went mush. <laughs> and maybe they did. Maybe they did, uh, but it, it it also it got smoosh. Yeah, it There's got squished in the street it. at like Aww. two and days after we found it. it. Was that the the squirrel's mom? Yeah, we, we think so. Then it showed up like the next day. It was at our back door, like hiding in our flower bed. Oh, and so we started feeding it. So we're raising this little we orphan have an squirrel. Orphan. Little orphan squirrely. Do you have like a little feeder for it, or you just put apples out? Apples. Do you dress and, your hand up like a and squirrel nuts. and pretend it's another one? No. Maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get to that. Just get the one off not the street. Yet. Although Amazon has, believe it or not, Very Amazon has job. everything. They have squirrel beds. Hey, do you guys want the ice cream before it melts? Do you guys want ice cream? I gave, him, I gave him some from over here. Oh, you did? Okay. But yeah, y'all can take that one too. Do you Ashley, do you want ice cream? Uh, I'm okay. Yeah. It's Sunday, you Monday. Sunday, Monday. I'm gonna have uh, dinner you know, later. You can't turn down ice cream on Sunday, All Monday. All right, I will have some Sunday, Monday, Sunday. Can we say it is podcast Sunday, Monday, or do we have to say it's podcast Sunday, Monday, egg today? Because <laughs> that's Monday, what Monday. it is. It doesn't egg. roll off the tongue as easily. Sunday, Monday. Sunday, Monday, egg. <laughs> Sunday, Monday, egg. Featuring egg. Egg. Well, next year we'll just have a big egg. We'll two, have a goat eggs. egg. So the plan is podcast <laughs> steak off. Podcast pancakes. I'm not cooking a steak anymore. Someone's cooking me a steak next time. Yeah, you are. Yes, you're exactly right. And then now we have podcast Sundays. So we need a fourth one. Here's what I'm thinking to tie all these things up. Well, let's just eat the squirrel when it gets big enough. We'll bring it <laughs> <laughs> within like three months from now. No, no, I'm just kidding. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. We're not going to eat joke. Jaws. We, we can make a stew. So we've, we have three now, three events. It's, t- it's tacos. One we, per quarter. We got to do tacos. We need the tacos. I thought we, we talked about doing pizza, like a special pizza day. What, what, what can we do? So we have tacos. So we have Pancakes. Shrove Tuesday is in kind of the spring. We have uh, Sunday, Monday for the summer. We can do steaks in the fall, so which we, would leave what would we do? Oh, shit. Are we going to do two steaks this year then? Are we, are we doing? Right, Eric said, well, Taco Tuesday, Mondays. We'll need, we'll need something uh, for winter. Preferably indoor then, so we don't have to go outside. S'mores. We should, yeah, or like, uh... S'mores? That's what you say? I don't, I don't know. Dude, I was put on the spot. I had to come up with something. You didn't what? have to. It's a group question. My first thought was, like, alcoholic Pudding. eggnog drinks and stuff like that. What about... But that's not fun. Campfire podcast with s'mores. In the, in the winter. Yep. Outside there, we'll light a fire. Massive one. Gavin just stole my idea. That was my idea. It's a great well, idea, Gavin. <laughs> he made it actually fun. That's like every everyone like in those group groups like creative meetings. Yeah. Somebody will say something and it was like eh, and then somebody will say the exact same. Yeah, but like, in their own. Oh, well, enough. he said it with his Australian accent. It was nice. <laughs> you add to ideas. It's you know community. You know. I think committee. I think the committee. campfire is implied when when you say s'mores. I think yeah, it's you can't have indoor s'mores. Right, what fine. are we just gonna eat raw s'mores? Hey, nice idea. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really funny, actually. Like, what are you doing? I mean, a s'mores. You've got like a chocolate bar, a marshmallow, and a graham cracker. Like, I think I like the act of making a s'more more than I like eating it. Yeah, oh, I hate them. It's not, I hate them. It's They're not, not worth it. It's not worth so it. So why are we doing that? We're not. <laughs> Clearly, two people suggest it. Why don't you roast a whole chicken? Eric, what are we doing for winter? Oh shit, dude! Uh, have you thought about s'mores? S'mores? Why don't we idea. do the f- Bernie? Why don't we do the cheese scrapings? Oh my god, that's what are the raclette scrapings? thingies. Raclette, where they where they take the cheese, 
and it's like a wheel of cheese, oh, and they cut it in half, so you got like this like strip um, where the cut is, and then they roast that and melt that all up, and then they take it over in like a plate of like steak or potatoes, and they go, Bleak. or Barbara's open mouth. <laughs> it's Barb, it's so good. How come you guys didn't eat there when you were in New York last time? I told you to go eat there. No time. So good. Yeah, you gotta make time for real quick. How have you not been back? You've been in New York a ton. I didn't have Harley with me. I feel, feel wrong to go without him. Harley. <laughs> yeah, he was he was a good person to bring to it. Harley from uh, Epic Meal Time. So if you're ever going to go have like a super over-the-top decadent meal. Like he was in the kitchen. Yeah. Like just walk, he, he actually, walked straight to the kitchen after halfway through the meal and started filming stuff. And he also asked if, with the, kitchen if staff. the woman would scrape it into his mouth, but she was having none of it because it would have burnt him. It was probably way too hot. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's molten cheese. Plan. He would still have that cheese in his beard today. He's got a cool thing going on. He's got a food sells product. Jerky. Yeah, have you had it? Pizza jerky? No. Yeah. He sells jerky? He's got a jerky brand. It's like a pizza jerky. It's jerky. <laughs> Tastes like pizza. And it's in Walmart. People keep saying we should do a pizza sphere for the winter. Oh, oh pizza. pizza sphere. I, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. I was what is that again? We were, gonna, we were gonna make, we we're gonna Smaller just layer pizzas, pizzas and yeah, the bigger ones. and then like make a sphere out Dude, of it. Dude, pizza sphere for the winter. We should do pizza sphere and infinite pizza on the other side. So well, it's, yeah. pizza. it's where you like cut it in a way where it, it makes a, a spiral a spiral and you, and you just you start like eating and you just keep going Have you never seen there. infinite pizza? No, sounds good though. That's the first that's what you gave Jordan on his first day of work yep. a Picture of how to eat infinite pizza You framed I it. I feel like to get through a pizza sphere you would need one of those Knives that jiggles like this <laughs> through bread just to get right down through all the layers guys can I have permission to like tell a, a racist song. joke? Oh god, I'm, I, I can't give you permission for that. Yeah, you can because it's a, it's a racist Mexican joke, but it's not that racist. It's just god fun. damn. It's gonna be okay. I got no control over this. How do, how do Mexican people cut pizza? <sighs> how? Little Caesars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait for it's the- cultural. I can't it's wait for the hard cut of that after the, uh, after the fucking discussion <laughs> about <laughs> immigrants at the, at the border being separated read, from their families. I read that online, I thought this weekend, that was kind of fun. That's multicultural. <laughs> Because you have to understand other people's languages in order to appreciate the joke. So I think it's We're doing that and the Donald I think it brings subreddit. us together. That's is what I Man, did you see that thing about, uh, that was it that political article about uh, Trump staffers complaining that they can't get matches in online dating in Washington, D.C.? Oh, that's, seriously, I know people who went to D.C. after college to start a career in politics. That's actually a really big deal. That's a fucking pretty crazy scene. It's a lot of really young people with... Honestly, huge egos. So if they're getting left out of that scene, that's a big fucking deal. It really is. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was the, the whole article wasn't about that. It was actually a really long piece. But then that's like the the section that everyone kind of picked up on and started spreading via social media. Just like, yeah, no tough shit. Oh well. Yeah, tough shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't feel bad about it. We were what talking you... about Tinder at VidCon because oh, yeah. we had a great, great million dollars butt panel. Who was on? Uh, it was me and Gavin. I think you were originally slated, but you ended up not being able to go to VidCon. Uh, so it was me, Phil DeFranco, Mamie Hart, did you, Grace, Grace Helbig. Did you introduce him this time? Hannah Hart. Dude, I got people kept <laughs> tweeting me about Phil DeFranco's intro all day. Like, I had I had anxiety. I didn't get anxiety. What happened? About what happened? Phil DeFranco's? Last year, Phil DeFranco was on the MDB podcast. He's great at MDB. Like, he just, like, riffs and can come up with these amazing scenarios. Yeah. And last year, we had the panel, Gavin was on it, and uh, it was Markiplier, and Justine, Justine, Phil DeFranco, I think Freddie was... Freddie, yeah, Wong. And then, yeah, and so I introed everybody, and I just, it was so many people to intro, uh, I forgot Phil. And like, we all he thought, was going to be last. We all thought it, he was, was doing a bit. a bit, so Bernie comes and like, sits down at the table with us, and I'm and looking of course at the Mark and like, Freddie, and we're like, yeah. You're gonna. <laughs> I look, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sweating, thinking about this. It's just... <laughs> I, so was he the first person you introduced this time around? No, he wasn't. <laughs> but uh, I was very, very clear. I would have like, made sure to get her over with. Oh my god, I know. I, first up, you Phil get, DeFranco. Give, give him a Gus. Introduce him first and last. I did, uh, and then uh, I did Mamie first, and the next up was the last panelist that I haven't named yet, which is Hank Green, the guy who started VidCon, and uh, he did great. He did really great. He he killed it too. He he was great, Gus. You, you should go back and I don't know if they record them, but if you can watch it, because he's like great, at like semantically picking everything apart and then mm. like making it even ten times worse by doing that. Oh That's God! Great. We so should have there... all those people in real episodes. Well, we have almost all of them at this point, except for Hank and Mamrie, and they both want to do the show. So hopefully, we can make that happen. Do you have Justine? No, Justine, Justine, and Freddie were not on the panel this year. Oh. They were not available. I don't. But believe. anyway, we should get both of them to be in an episode. Absolutely. 
Freddy would be great because you know we could get him to do some visual effects for it too. That'd be fun. Ooh. Mm. You know, he probably, saw, do it. he'll probably make us do it. But. <laughs> I saw Justine during E3. It's always it's always good to see her and catch up. I feel like I, I I never get to see her. She's always so busy doing stuff. I know. Yeah, there's like there's certain people you have to keep up with on their Instagram story. You yeah. know, that's the only way to keep up with them. She has so much tech. But one of the scenarios was million dollars, but every time you have sex. Your head becomes disconnected from your body for 24 hours. Like you're fine, you just you can pull your own after head off. sex or before sex. It's like during sex, the moment Does you start like having sex, float around or you have to like hold it. No, you'd have to like hold your head. On penetration, and then you're you're like you could get the other person to hold it for you. That's pretty cool. When right? does the head pop off? At the beginning of sex? Yeah, or when penetration. You're... Right. So penetration. it's like as soon as it starts. What if you don't finish? So we're going. We see like we're going down the rabbit hole. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the the best thing about that because we played the card game because we didn't really have anything else to do on stage. We're not going to go out and film that stuff. So we did the card game. We did one hand, and one hand. We spent thirty five minutes of the hour panel talking about one hand. You know, it's just like I mean. Five different scenarios, but like only one round, basically. Yeah, we should film those though. We should make those episodes. We do them at RTX. The problem I feel is, like Bitcoin is a perfect one because you get people who can't make it to RTX. That would be great too. The problem is, all those people we have to then schedule a second round of shooting with them, <laughs> where we shoot the scenarios. Yeah. What? I'm reading chat here. Why? What if you were really into hair pulling? <laughs> well, I was thinking like, like they could hold you by the hair. <laughs> well, where would you disconnect? Because oh, some people also like choking, but like if your head's disconnected. Does like if you choke, then does it pop off? Like, how does that happen? Well, I just thought of a great joke that I could have said during the panel, and I missed it now. Would you just tell people in advance? You tell people, look, I just, I really like to give head. <laughs> no, <laughs> literally, because we were talking about like what the hell would your Tinder, you Tinder bio look like? You'd be like, look, I'm already straight front about this. I love to wear turtlenecks <laughs> during sex, <laughs> and this is just what I'm into. Ignore all the ropes, but and you can get like connecting things of you. You could like get a view you normally couldn't get, you know. Well, why do you go to the butthole right away? I'm just I can't get that view normally. Could you pull I on like, get, like a, I, I would like to like watch myself yeah. have sex. Maybe you said that she put herself on the shelf and just like, yeah, let's see this. But also, I, I, it would also be my boyfriend having sex with a headless body. <laughs> That's true. Which I don't know if I'd uh, enjoy. Could you wear a diving suit <laughs> <laughs> to have sex? And just cut a hole for again? Your no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you talking about like not? the big <laughs> thing with the the metal? Yeah, keep your head in. Do you think of like a neoprene but, wetsuit that holds everything together or like an no, actual- like Bioshock. <laughs> <laughs> like Big Daddy. But then like yeah. your head's loose and it like spins around. What if you're facing like the wrong way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it's like rattling around in that thing. It's just like up against the window. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a blast. And that's the thing about that show is that show is so much fun to do because it's, it's just like we just did now. You just like sit around and riff for like- It's the best part. 20, 30 minutes. I would say Million Dollars Butt is my, one of my favorite shows and least favorite shows to make. Least? Well, like the table part, I love it. I could do that all day. It's efficient. Doing the B-roll and all that crap where it's like, all right, wear a costume for 28 hours for, you know, four seconds of footage. Right. That stuff gets really old. Or, I mean, I'm still to this day, they asked Gavin to do something. And I said, no. I heard about it like in the pre-production meeting. I'm like, no, no, we're not going to shoot this. And I said, I wouldn't ask Gavin to do that. And they're like, well, why don't we just like run it by Gavin? I go, you can run it by Gavin. He's going to say no to doing that. Oh, what was it? Can I say? Well, I don't know what it is. When they made the fake dog shit and you ate dog shit in the park. Yeah. And like the close up of you eating turds. Yeah. And I thought, there's no way Gavin. <laughs> Gavin was like, oh, fuck it, dude. I don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I'll do it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm glad I didn't veto it. Well, here. the thing is, I like to do a lot of, or I used to do a lot more like shit related MDBs. And everyone was like, stop doing so much about asses and anuses and dicks and stuff. In bathrooms. So when one came up and I'm the one turning down doing shit, I can't be that guy. I'm gonna have to stuff a few shits in uh, my mouth and yep. get, get down on it. I like wow. that. I like that attitude. The you worst would... part about that there was there was real dog shit on the grass, <laughs> just right. nearby, That's and it was right. smelled like it was. It smelled like real shit. So you could, could smell dog shit while he's eating fake yeah. dog shit. But it was delicious. It was a really weird. I was so confused internally. I saw uh. a video of there's this restaurant that serves a dessert, but in like a full toilet. They bring you a full toilet. Oh, that's just. And, what's wrong and with you people? open up the lid, and there's it's chocolate ice cream, no. but it's smeared against like the inside of the bowl. So, so you're like scraping off skitters? Yeah, you, you're like Is eating. Is there corn it. in there? I saw that. Yeah. You did, what's yeah. Wrong with I, when I was in Korea, I ate at a cafe that they did that, except it was little toilets like this big. That's so <laughs> disgusting. Like, where'd you get a little toilet like that? This is like a full size toilet. But yeah, I saw that when the guy is like carrying it with two arms. Ugh. You could 3D print anything. I was like, you could put anything in there. Anything like the most delicious fucking dessert in the world. I'm not eating something that looks like shit out of a toilet. Do you think no. you I could can't shit separate. on like a 25% toilet? Like a quarter sized toilet? I can do it. Uh, like, you don't have precision? I don't have control. No, like, is it low or is it like 
Like what? Yeah, how the, is it? It's like the bowl. But is that, God, then you're like sitting on your ass. Well, right? yeah, people meal. men a shit anyway. They men a squat. I don't even know if you could squat. Like, oh, no. oh that's like <laughs> that. <laughs> Good timing. Awful. Is that broccoli in it? I think that's soup. That's oh. something else. It looks like beef. That's like with the place Casserole. I went to in Korea. It's like it's a small uh, toilet, like that size. That looks awful. That looks like who? Who thinks to do that? Then tell somebody yeah, else right. about this. They're, yeah, they're, they're all was, sitting on toilets. They're yeah. on bogs. It's the, the toilet woods. cafe. Oh. Gross. No thanks. Yeah, I've seen that like where they put coffee drinks and stuff in toilets too, like little toilet mugs. Yeah, that's great because coffee makes me shit. So where's the squirrel? <laughs> oh, she's gone. In one end, out the other. Yeah, it's like Excellent. ooh, my cup, my mug is empty. Time to fill it. Oh. I had a, a scary dream the other day about because I was thinking about cool evolutions. I guess like how some chameleons and stuff can blend to look like other shit. Yeah, how does that work out over time? But I was thinking, like why hasn't color? a plant evolved <laughs> with human skin? Okay. Annihilation. Why? Oh, it's kind of like annihilation, isn't it? No. But, but it like mutations, but why human skin on a plant? It's a different kingdom. I just think it'd be off-putting. Well, yeah, it would be. You're right. It'd be very off-putting. But what's the purpose of it? Like, does that plant the well, human every, skin? Every plant has a purpose, like the way it grows, the way it looks, doesn't it? Yeah. But if it was actually like leathery feel of skin, that's that's like one of the creepiest things I can imagine. Well, vegetarians like omnivores wouldn't eat it. Not herbivores wouldn't eat it, right? Because yeah. they don't eat meat. What a cow does a cow eat meat? If it gave it meat, would it eat meat? Yeah, I think that's that's how, a, that's how mad, mad cow happens. Cow died. Right. They put protein in it. Yeah, they like So it's just cows. But they're herbivores because they can't catch anything, basically. Is that right? I think so. They're just lazy. Like if they could catch something, they would They'd eat, eat it. you if they could. Yeah. They probably would, right? Like Bernie Burger. What that is the purpose good. of the four stomachs? Is I it like think it's because there's it, the the grass and the vegetation they eat is so has like so dense in cellulose. It takes so long to break down. It has to go through different stages and redigestion. It's like different kinds of acids, right? Like they'll and they're like and then they'll spit it up as cud, continue to chew it, and then swallow it again for a, a different stomach. Because when you throw up, it comes out of your stomach. Mm -hmm. So the cow vomits. <laughs> yeah, they is chew it, it. The the new the first stomach. Or can one stomach go into the next one? Oh, like the, How does the cow vomit work? Like a, like a ventricle and a right, heart? Like, yeah. Do they all connect or do they all come up to the mouth to then get well, sent down to different? Well, that's what chewing your cut is. So they eat grass. It's delicious. Then they their stomach digests it for a while and they puke it back up into their mouth and chew that again. You want to know something real dumb? <laughs> go ahead. You know how like you... you it's still less gross than the toilet bowl food too. You hear words and like phrases and stuff when you're a kid. For the longest time, probably until I was about 12 or 13 year old, years old, I would hear about cows chewing cud, and I thought for some reason cud was the word for baby cow. Oh. <laughs> and so I thought I thought cows just chewed on their babies. Living babies? Yeah. And like just like that on was the just, kids? Like they would, would just be out in the field just chewing their cud. And I'd be like, why do they have to do that? Okay, <laughs> I guess assholes. it sounds like kid. Is that yeah, what you're thinking like maybe? Calf. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was like probably until I was 12 or 13 that I thought that was the case. That's funny. I mean, I still think that Australia, proud. Is Australia is where ostriches come from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to get that fact out of my head. I got it wrong for so long, it's never going to leave my head. Yep. It's like scarring yeah. of yeah. your brain. Yeah. There's it's, a lot of stuff you like get in your brain or learn as a kid that you think is true until... Also, can you remember times in your life where you know an adult to told you something wrong? Like you know yeah. you learned something? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you yeah. got it wrong, and you're like, oh, that fucking adult was wrong. I was told if I crossed my eyes and someone hit me on the back of the head, they would say that way. Yeah. When, I was when told we it's were illegal to turn on a light inside a car. <laughs> yeah. That's one I was told that. When when, when, when a car is driving, you can't turn the light yeah, on. Yeah, because you get pulled over. Yeah. I was in <laughs> my <laughs> ninth grade English class with Frank, you know Frank. And our teacher was trying to teach us the concept of ennui. And she pronounced it N-U-I. Oh. <laughs> and Frank raised his hand, like, no, I think you mean ennui. She goes, no, N-U-I. He goes, no, it's a French word. It's ennui. He goes, she goes, no, it's E-N-N-U-I. Ennui. Or N-U-I. We like, and Frank and I sat next to each other like, yeah, just give it up. It's it's not happening. My English teacher we pronounced it Tusami instead of Tsunami. Oh. Tusami? And I was like, Tusami. read it. It's not how it's spelled. Read it. I love Jessica Tusami. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's such... School's the worst for that. It's like they're, yeah. they're teaching who I, knows how many people wrong. I was also told, and I like I didn't realize how far spread this fact or rumor was that Marilyn Manson had a rib removed so he could suck his own dick. Yeah. Did anyone else <laughs> I heard that. hear I heard that, that as a kid? Yeah. yeah, that's not true. No, of course not. No, so I know was, it's not. But my like, operation was a waste. 
But as a, like, how did every single kid know that fact? How do, how do kids learn anything? They talked about, uh, there's a thing called, what the hell is it called? Backmasking? Like it's called the schoolyard network no. or something, little kid network where the information passes. For me, it's always. But it's like across country. How in the fuck did all kids know to blow on cartridges for Nintendo? Like that they all, that was like a, a running thing. It wasn't just like a solution. It was like a big part of the culture. That was and kind of analog wide though. Like if, if something wasn't working, you always blow on it. Or bang it or Think tap on it. People know there's dust on it. But the actual solution existed all the time and it was super easy. And a friend of mine knew the solution, but that didn't permeate. But the blowing did. Yeah. He would take quarters and you'd put them on top of the uh, Nintendo cartridge and it would like, the spring would wear out. So it wouldn't hold itself down. So you just had to wedge it against the top of the yeah, thing. Yeah, the blowing actually did nothing. Did nothing. It was just you were resetting the thing. You were just taking it out, putting it back in, and resetting it. The blowing did absolutely nothing. I don't think that's true. No, it's I, absolutely I true. I want to believe that you my have blowing to, was You had to press it down further. It was just, all that was happening was you were just putting it, taking it out and putting it in more and more, and eventually it would work. Eventually you get a shitty connection that worked. Right. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. It's basically just like a, like a, like a short, almost. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Someone also recently told me they, they never realized that the phrase, hold your horses, means be stable. But I don't think that's what that means. Hold your horses means be stable? Yeah, it's like, because it's like, be like a stable and oh hold your God. horses. No! But, but, but hold, great, hold your horses great, means calm down. It's a great connection, yeah, it though. Yeah, it's like, don't, like, don't jump to conclusions immediately. Or, or it's like, like don't do that immediately. starting line for a race and your horse is trying to go and you like, hold your horses. Yeah, like, so the person was telling me, they're like, I can't believe I never realized that. And I was like, e well, that is, I don't think that's right. And it's not right, but that's a great <laughs> reference, though. Yeah. Well, I, 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 hey, be stable. My be big stable. one, which, man, I held this forever, forever. Was it a I, horse? I remember a teacher telling me that separate with an E and separate with an A are two different words. <laughs> and separate. separate with an E was the verb and separate was the adjective. Like, those are two separate things. And then if you want to separate things, that it's, it's with an E. And I, I just, I believe that for fucking ever. Oh my god. I believe it forever. You should sue that too. It's like effect and effect, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that. And it's like, I, I can clearly remember the alter teacher who taught alter. me that. And, and it was just wrong. She wow. just taught me something wrong. Let that be a lesson to everyone who's still in school. Andrew Blanchard they don't has, know anything. has some of the best misunderstandings of phrases. <laughs> like, play it by ear. Play it by year. <laughs> oh he god. thought it was woof it down instead of wolf it down. I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> woof it down? I don't know people who say woof instead of wolf though too. Yeah, but he thought it was actually woof like he's the dumb. dog. <laughs> he's dumb. Oh. Well, <laughs> there were of course there were always words that I read more than I ever said. Epitome. Epitome was mine. Mm. Yeah. And so it's like you just get them pronounced wrong. And then biopic. To, they're always wrong. Yeah, but yeah, you always made fun of me for biopic. It's not a biopic. <laughs> biopic. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna read this. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of Received Podcast is also brought to you by Bespoke Post. Upgrading your clothes, your kitchen, even your bar has never been easier. Uh, if you're like me, adding more style to your life without a trip to the store sounds perfect. Anything to not go to the store. Uh, that's where Bespoke Post comes in. Each month, Bespoke Post delivers a box full of goods to upgrade your style, apartment, and your life. There's no commitment. There are new boxes each month on style, grooming, drinking, or travel. The bar section has some great glasses, brew kits, and good-looking accessories. I just ordered something, actually, from the travel section. Uh, it's a new bag. I've been trying to think of getting rid of my backpack, so I can't wait to get it and try it out. Uh, Bespoke Post scouts out quality and unique products around the world, delivering t them to you every month without high retail markups. To get started, visit boxofawesome.com, answer a few questions about the style you want to achieve. Each box goes for under 50 bucks, but has more than $70 worth of unique gear inside. If you're not feeling that month's box, just skip it. To receive 20% off your first subscription box, go to boxofawesome.com, enter promo code ROOSTER at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, promo code ROOSTER for 20% off your first box. Bespoke Post themed boxes for guys that give a damn. Thank you for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Do you say bespoke? Is it bespoke? I think it's bespoke. Bespoke? I felt weird saying bespoke post. I feel like enunciating it is important for the for the URL, but then the URL was Box of Awesome. So I got I got in my own head. <laughs> We're just talking about words that you read and don't. Yeah, <laughs> it, just, it, was, it was just, I was, I was all screwed up. I say, I say kernel. best poke. That's how I say it. Best the best poke. Best poke. So <laughs> that's what I put on my Tinder profile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got the best poke. Got the best poke. Uh, Did you ever use that word for being fingered? What? Bespoke. <laughs> Bespoke. No, 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 no. Like, like that guy poked me. Uh, I, I wouldn't say because I'm a dude and I never got fingered, but except by Jeff. Oh, he fingers. Yeah, fingers my ass. Yeah, but that was only on camera. <laughs> Maybe it's a northern thing. 
Getting fingered on camera? Yep, sure is. <laughs> nope. But the word maybe it's northern lingo. Like, oh yeah, went out last night, got poked. No, nope. no, that doesn't. That northern like where? You're getting like, fucked by someone with a micro dick. Like, uh, or really like sharp dick. The girl who said it was, she was a Geordie. None yeah. of what you've said made sense. <laughs> Newcastle. She's okay. from Newcastle. <laughs> she said she got poked. Yeah. If you're from Newcastle, and you've been poked, uh, let it me know in the comments. And getting poked means specifically fingered? Getting finger blasted, yeah. And <laughs> not, not. That sounds like it was an accident. Oh, I can check with her. It was about 15 years ago like that she was This guy poked me. me. I turned around and slapped him in the face. <laughs> I would never use that term. I knew Geordies were from Newcastle because sometimes I watch like British reality TV and they'll, Geordie, th sure. they'll have terms that I don't know and I'll text Gavin and I'm like, hey, what does this mean? <laughs> and he'll have to reply. And one time I watched uh, an episode, they kept saying Geordie. I was like, what the fuck does this mean? Yeah. Well, there is no way, there is no nice way to say fingered. Uh, that, that's a shirt. <laughs> 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 What's wrong with fingered? I mean, it's so graphic. But Yeah, but you can finger a, a flute. Or like a recorder. That to me that. just sounds like you're sticking your finger in it. <laughs> Gavin. What about digitized? <laughs> That's that good. for you? That's, That's good. That's nice. I got digitized. Yeah. <laughs> what about... Redactled. <laughs> Telegrammed. Because <laughs> it's Morse code? <laughs> I guess poked is a nice way of saying it. It's the, it's just say it's the nicest way of saying it. It's not necessarily a nice way of yeah. saying it. What about indexed? You Ooh. could say, oh, oh. yeah, index is good. Or you taught a friend braille. That would be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't read any of it. it was just <laughs> you tried for like 20 minutes though. So nobody didn't learn oh, anything. All I read is G. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Oh, good. Barbara, can I ask you a question? Have you ever run across a micro penis? What qualifies as micro penis? Gus, you can answer this. <laughs> Isn't it like less than you two have a inches? Laptop? What? No, I, I've been very fortunate not to have. No? Okay. Because yeah. okay. I don't know how I'd react. And obviously, like, you never want to insult someone. It's variety? People it's are a... born with what they're born with, but. Wow. Uh, it's a length of at least 2.5 standard deviations smaller than the male penis size or smaller than about two and three quarters inches for an adult. Okay. okay. Is that two and three quarters inches, yeah. Man. The like Wikipedia for micro penis is awesome. Oh yeah, you get a lot of stuff in your searches. The nice thing about being on the podcast is we're immune from, I guess, like any kind of Glove. HR conversations about search history. Have you ever seen Stern's? They, he has a micro penis contest, um, and it's a, it's in video format that you could find online. Uh, I don't know how I stumbled across it. How how big were we talking on that? It was pretty hard to it, find. It looked like <laughs> it looked like a thumb in a bush. <laughs> For the most. Thumb thumb in the bush. Bush. I've seen this too. Some, some of the guys could honestly do some work with some <laughs> some presentation. Only like if they zero trim point, some stuff down. Yeah, could help. Only you know. zero point six percent of the population has a true micro penis. How, has to percent? chew it. Has true. a true. Oh. What, what percentage? <laughs> zero point six percent. Oh, that's not well. So how many Americans are there? Three hundred. What? We'll 350, say three, divide by three, two. Three, for, fifty million. Divide by two for men. Uh, divided by two times point oh six. That's percent. So they got to throw a couple more O's in there. Uh, one hundred five thousand. One hundred five thousand is the population of the U.S. That's that's not right. Did you divide by two for men? Yeah. Okay. Divided by two and then point oh six percent. Yep. Point oh six percent. A point oh six. Yeah. Point oh six. That's like five ten cones. Yes. No jeez. Yeah, that seems like a lot of people hole. still. What? Over a hundred thousand? Seems like a lot. Yeah, put together, it's like two dicks. <laughs> wow! Look at you. All right, being insensitive. Mount. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't it be? I mean, it'd be variety, wouldn't it? I mean, it'd be like, oh, I've never, I've never had this before. A so. billion. I feel like you would just like rub up on it. Yeah, because I don't know if it could go inside. Plus, it's all like the guy's got other stuff going on. You know, he's got like, I'm sure, he's got other stuff figured out. You know, a billion you dollars. It. It's, it's like Daredevil. Have. He's probably great at poking. There you go. Digitizing, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Indexing. Billion dollars, but you have a tiny one inch penis. A billion? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell, hell yeah. yes. And in a second. In a you second. guys also have like girlfriends and wives. Well, I also have a tiny penis already. So <laughs> you, just you, you know what I don't have? Billion dollars. A billion dollars. <laughs> but what's yeah. the point of having a billion dollars? If, if you were single, tiny doesn't mean non functional. Well, what if, if you said like shaboom and cut it off, then I would say, okay, let's think about what that. What if you were Kendall? 
Yeah? What, I can what, see if, Barbie? what if it was an inch long, but it only curled upwards like the squirrel tooth? Ken has such nice outfits. What? Oh, the squirrel tooth? <laughs> so, wasn't that a big thing about Bill Clinton? Like that his, 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 he had an angle? Like he had a, like a, like a, like a shift? Like a, like a vector? Which way, though? I don't know, like, I don't like know, he Gav. Had, he hung left? Yeah. I mean, it all depends on curve. how you're looking at it, I well, guess. Well, I mean, if you're in politics and you're going right or left, it's going to be important. Stage left or stage right. It's like the, <laughs> two different directions. <laughs> uh, so, so billion dollars, small penis, no, w yeah, no problem. What's the Done. female equivalent of that? Done. The female equivalent of that? Yeah. What like, if you got like your two inches shallow? Vagina? Like you're just like shallow. Like, just, like you're shallow. You no, have no like, depth. No depth. Oh, yeah. like, it's like an avocado. You'd rather have less depth than less... Width, width, right? Because that would make things a lot more challenging if you had less width. Well, a little shallow what? depth would be hard. Too. What if yeah, everyone? De depth is you never hear about way more that. difficult. What if everyone depth knew would though? Just make it painful. And everyone called well, you tiny dicked millionaire or billionaire. Still have a billion dollars. I would take a million of the dollars, and I would hire permanently a little person. And have him say his name is Dick. And so people say, hey, it's Tiny Dick Millionaire. It's like, yeah, here's Tiny Dick. <laughs> I did not so, know where that was going. <laughs> Me neither. I, was like, I thought you were going to have him hold your dick. I was, I, was navigating, I was navigating a lot of vocabulary while I was, <laughs> while I was saying that. So I had to make sure did I didn't say it? anything that was too offensive. Billion dollars, Tiny Dick? No, I probably not. You're insane. You're insane. I would I would do no dick and take a billion dollars. There's a hundred thousand people do with a billion dollars. What's the point? You don't need a dick to enjoy a billion dollars, dude. I don't know if you know this. Why do okay, why is every billionaire man got a billion dollars? So he can use his penis. <laughs> you think so? You can still have them are all super old. Like you, the, you can still have fun with a billion dollars without using your penis. They're all sugar daddies, aren't they? Well, what about the guy who uh married Anna Nicole Smith? He was a billionaire, right? I think so. Yeah. She probably uses dick plenty. You think so? I hope so. I mean, I hope so. I mean, why not? It's his fucking, you know, money. He can spend it on whatever. You know, not that he paid her, but he obviously, I think a big, <laughs> big attraction for that guy was he has a billion fucking dollars. I mean, money isn't everything, but man, a billion dollars? You could also change people's lives with that. Like, you could solve some big fucking problems. Mm. Can't solve your no dick, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but little small doesn't mean non-functional. I think that's what you're saying. Is that you yeah, know what's it gonna do? It's like and you could like go blow, ahead. you could like blow on it and stuff. No, you what? just put it in and out. It wasn't blowing on it that fixed it. Do a billion dollars, you get two ribs taken out. Problem <laughs> solved. You're done. It's like You've sucking got your it. thumb. You got did, it. Did you hear there was a I, I this obviously making me think about this? I'm 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 putting my foot down here on this. You guys are insensitive. All right. Uh, you There's want, a lot of people you, you, out there you, that have small dicks you, and they don't have a billion dollars. You want to tell, you want to tell your little, like you want tell your little Caesar joke again? Okay. There's way more than 105,000 of them. Okay, um, good point. So we're, we're even. We're even at this did, point. Did you see there was that, uh, you know that uh, that sex robot? Was it from the UK? Jaws? Samantha? <laughs> I guess it's, it received an upgrade to where it can now decline sex if it's not in the mood to have sex. Okay. But what programs its mood? Yeah, I, I don't know yet. Yeah, what dictates that? It's like that? it's 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 interesting that racist jokes, dude. If I had to like convince my Roomba to vacuum it's, the way I have to convince my kids, I'd be done. It's like, like come on, man. It's yeah. a, a variety of reasons, including an overly aggressive partner. Uh, she also entered this mode if she feels bored with her partner's attentions. Hmm. Like if that's he's algorithmically his phone? determined. Yeah. Hmm. I don't I know. Mean, I mean, who's look, I mean, who's gonna use that though? And you could just get a robot that just. Unless they're trying to get something more realistic and like actually have that human yeah, what connection. Is, oh. the, what is the motivation for that, Gus? Uh, I think it's just to try to give it... it it's, 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 it's the closest word. There's no closer word. It's to give the robot the ability to give consent. Right. Uh, yeah. And to like demonstrate that the technology is, so it's, is progressing. So it's a moral development on the behalf of the machine? Yes. Or Okay. It's not something like the, the the consent conversation makes it more realistic. Correct. Okay. For the for the human user. I believe okay. I believe so. I mean, would I don't know. you love conversation? I think we're going to have on more increasing basis is the rights of machines when you can't tell if they're machines or not. Uh, well, just just the rights of machines in general. I mean, I it's think... nice to teach people consent. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad thing. But also, I don't ever want to ask my washing machine for consent. I'm going to shove the clothes in and shove a Tide Pod in and slam the door and press go. But you a little could. different. <laughs> Well, it's a little different. Because you're not shoving your dick in it. Oh, yeah, I'm totally not. 
You just put your dirty underwear in it and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> just super it's not So it's just because it's a sex thing. Maybe, maybe it's like also like trying to push towards sentience. What about a flashlight? Do I have to... What about a vibrator? More common sex toy. That's a machine. Get to it's not a, a robot, vibrator though. for consent? Please, no. Right? See, there you go. See, see, you don't want, you don't want to deal on. with that. I think this is the difference between like a machine and a robot. Like, what's the line? Yeah. We're not what? talking about Westworld, right? A brain? Or just like the fact that it... Awareness, self-awareness? Looks I was, like a human? I was holding my cat this morning. My black cat. And I was holding it, I was Where looking into its eyes, going? and I was like, I love this little thing so much. And I had to squeeze it because I loved it so much. Is it Columbo? Or is Columbo, it? Okay. yeah. And I was like mushing her head, I was like, oh, I love the cat. But then I was, because I just watched Westworld, I was like, if this wasn't a real cat, would I love it so much? And I couldn't tell. Did, did you watch the uh, season finale yesterday? Yeah. Bernie, you said you hadn't, right? I haven't seen it. And you haven't watched season two, right? I haven't seen any of season two yet. Yeah. Okay. It was good. That's a confusing season of television. I felt like wise. I've heard a lot of. I was uh, very mixed on things. season two. I was I thought it was very up and down and very uneven. I thought season one was really solid. I thought season two was very uneven. But after the conclusion of the finale last night, I thought season two was way better than season one. Oh, really? Just I because of the last episode, they tied up a lot of the stuff <clears throat> I had questions about and a lot of stuff I wasn't happy with. They addressed in a satisfying manner. Okay, that's good. I felt like that would have been a good season four. Because I was actually Maybe. more excited about like more in the park stuff, and it really was just like the park's just falling apart mm -hmm. for the whole season. I was like, that seemed like that could have gone later, but I was still excited about the world and learning about the world, and they just were just like, we're done with that. That was season one. Mm -hmm. You know what would be exciting for me to get me really back into Westworld? Because I do watch it, but I'm more of a casual. Like, I've got like four episodes i got to catch up on. See more tits? Season. No, it uh. would be if they said, we're coming back for season three and that's it. Like we're just gonna do three uh, are, seasons. Have they, even, have they even been renewed for season three? I don't think so. Everything I've heard about that is that that is a problematic shoot every time they go to shoot that show. That it's way more expensive than they expect. Oh, just expensive wise. Yeah. Well, it's so a it's lot of doors. exteriors. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost all exteriors. It's cooler. Yeah. Also, it's like I can't imagine what it's like. You sign up for that. It's like you're gonna be naked. You're gonna be naked. <laughs> That's it's, at yeah. some point, no matter what part you have. Ed Harris wasn't naked. It wasn't he? Are you sure? I don't, no? I don't think it, so. It makes you realize how, like, kind of grossly thin a lot of people in the industry are, in the acting Oh, industry. in Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like, really, like, frighteningly thin. But they look, I guess, average mm -hmm. when they're in clothes and stuff because that's the way so a lot of actors season, look. Season three has been <clears throat> confirmed. And uh, it will be made. And I wish I had not read what I just read about it. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so don't, do not... Read about it if you're a uh, man. <laughs> if you're curious, but you watched all of season two. Oh yeah, and it spoils something for season three. Potentially, I, I wish I didn't know what I knew now. Uh, I'll, I'll just say that. Don't ever, and I hate to say this, but don't ever like subscribe to things like Hollywood Reporter or Variety. It was Hollywood Reporter. Was <laughs> they they don't care. I mean, they genuinely did. They're there to report on the industry. They do. They'll put it in a headline. Absolutely. Oh, it's The Walking Dead. They they lived to spoil The Walking Dead. The Hollywood Reporter might be the reason I don't watch The Walking Dead anymore, because every time there was a major death, which by the way, there's a lot on The Walking Dead, they would always say like, "Oh, this character is this actor's leaving the show after so many seasons." They have a photo of them. It's like, well. It's the Walking <laughs> Dead, so they're not just going to wander off into the woods, you know, to mm -hmm. go get their dry cleaning. It's probably going to get eaten by a zombie or shot by somebody, you know, and so it's it, it, it ruined everything for me. I hate having to f Google around to find the best way to watch something. There's absolutely no consistency. Oh, like to watch something online, like after it's aired? What do you mean? Well, okay, like so... Some shows are Hulu, some shows are HBO. Uh, Handmaid's Tale. Hulu? The Handmaid's Tale is on Hulu. E. And it's shot in 4K. So I was like, okay, I want to watch it in 4K. But the app on the Apple TV 4K doesn't do 4K. Awesome. And the only way to watch it in 4K is on an Xbox One S or X or a PS4 Pro. Yeah, I've been watching Now that's annoying because you can get Hulu on everything. And, and if you watch, I believe if you watch, if you have the live TV tier and you watch Hulu on the PS4, you can't watch live TV in the Hulu app on the PS4. God. How right. do you... It's and, like, and what? <laughs> And none of the 4K is HDR, even right. though it's all clearly shot that way. Like, what is this? What's the, with these half assed almost their services who are just like spending money on all these shows and then airing them really shittily? Like, most people watching A Handmaid's Tale aren't going to be watching it on a Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro. I probably assume. Probably not. It's probably going to be normal Xbox One, Apple TV, or like a thingy or whatever. Or the app in their TV. 
Yeah, or online, or like on in a browser. Yeah. Praise be though, am I right? Right. Right. <laughs> How do you guys watch Westworld? I watch it as it airs, or on HBO on like a cable DVR. Cable. Yeah. So oh, it's really shitty then. It's It'll be pretty like bad. 720p. It's pretty bad. How do you watch it? <laughs> 1080i. 1080i. I watch it on Apple TV. Okay. HBO Go. I watch it on uh, HBO Now, the app on my Xbox One. And I don't know why I continue to do it because it has the worst compression for blacks. Oh, yeah. That I've ever seen. And there's so many black. Cable, talking like, cable like, is bad for that, too. Yeah, uh, black background. Yeah. It's like you can see like this weird like digital gradation yeah. in a black yeah. background. But there's it's like, like 7,000 different shades of black on like a UHD disc. There's like six what, what, on streaming. What right. uh, what like platform eight. did you say you watch it on? I know you said HBO now, but on what? H on Xbox One. I watch, I actually, uh, on HBO specifically, I switched to my Apple TV because it looks better streaming from my Apple TV than it did on my so, Xbox One. I don't know, do you guys have Hulu? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you do it through cable HBO, right? You said? And you do it on HBO now? I don't know how we watch, I think I watch Hulu through my Xbox as well, because that's how we watch good plays so, Hulu, right? I discovered this accidentally. Um, I canceled my HBO account because I, I signed up through iTunes and I didn't have like an actual login thing, so I wanted to cancel it and then resubscribe uh, so I could watch it like on my computer and stuff. Yeah. Um, I canceled it and then I was on Hulu one day and it said add HBO now for $5 yeah. to Hulu. So instead of paying the what, $14.99 a month, you pay an additional $4.99 Is that to permanent? Hulu. Hmm? Really? So it basically it's just an additional we didn't we discover this recently like someone was said they bought HBO through Amazon or something and we were so confused. My HBO is through AT and T <laughs> through my phone, uh, and setting that up sucks. Really? <laughs> so why'd you do it that way? Well, I just because it was free. It's oh. Free of my phone. I'm gonna go like, why would I pay for it if it's you free? You got free HBO through your phone? Through my phone contract, HBO is free. Really? But it is not quick to make. To go from I have this phone plan to I am watching it on my Apple TV was like two hours. Too complicated? Yep. I yeah. assume that'll be easier in the future now that they've uh, officially acquired Time Warner Media. Yeah. And Time Warner owns HBO? Yeah. Guys, so it's just at t and Disney at this point, right? Is that it? Pretty much. It's pretty much. That's, that's it. You got two companies you're going to go for two for entertainment. Fucking crazy basies, man. That's nuts. Oh, yeah. Part of the problem, Gus. How's it feel? We're part of the problem. Are we? Are we? Are we? It's weird. Are we? Uh, are we helping fight from the inside, or is, or is that what we're doing? I feel like we're fairly autonomous. We're yeah. fairly, fairly hands off with with everything. But I don't know. I mean, there's there's other other factors at play, and like how how does network prioritization happen, and things like that. You know, things that we haven't started to see come into effect yet. Also, it's like I feel like you spend your whole life. Fighting that stuff and ultimately nobody cares like one of the things that always bugs me is spent so long talking about net neutrality and Now net neutrality is essentially this moment gone. It'll probably come back I have a feeling with the midterm elections and the follow-up elections. We're gonna have a fucking huge pendulum swing back I just I, I feel it. I think we're just in this mode now We're just gonna swing back and forth and it's gonna get more and more severe and I just don't know it's gonna be not gonna, it's not gonna be great, um, but but there are some good things that'll come about, and I think net neutrality be one of those things that makes its its way back. But it's like it's interesting because people will fight about like net neutrality. But while I'm sitting here and I'm hearing you talk about, oh, I get free HBO with my AT and T. Another example of that is if you have a T Mobile phone, uh, you get Netflix. It doesn't count against your data cap. Right. And I was like, oh, that's so badass. The T Mobile does that. It's like no, that's exactly the opposite of net neutrality. It's cheaper for you to use Netflix. Than it is for you to use yeah, and, any of their and, competitors. And I've seen some people who are very vocal about net neutrality also right. post on social media like about how great that deal is. And like <laughs> you realize that that is in clear violation of net neutrality. Right. That's not even. That's not even delivery of the same packets or different packets in the same way. You know. And it's just like and people don't. But then ultimately, um, it just comes down to people like, well, I get it for free. So I don't care. You know. Which I think is like honestly. I'm one of the only still holdouts of uh, Fortnite pivoting their whole game into Battle Royale. That still bothers me to this day, but it doesn't bother anybody else, you know? Everyone nobody else nobody thinks about totally it. totally fine yeah. with it, and it's because the game is free, and it's on PS4, and so they're like, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. As long as I can play a Battle Royale game, I'm good. I don't give a shit. You think Fortnite's falling off at all, or is it still— I don't think so. Uh, it seems like it's still going really, really strong. Yeah, I mean, people were—I think they got—maybe got a bump from the PS4 controversy about uh, the crossplay, lack of crossplay. Did uh, like PS4, PS4 ever do anything about that? Switch no. And stuff? 
Yeah, you, you can crossplay PC and Switch, but you can't if you signed up with your account on a PlayStation, you can't go the other way. I was thinking this the other day when I was reading up on some of the E3 stuff. And all the companies have their different time, like press conferences at different times throughout E3. And I was just thinking, if Valve just came out and just said Half-Life 3 after any of these, no one would give a shit about anything else at E3. Yeah. Like, they could win E3. It's, like, it's the ultimate trump card. Whenever they want. I just think with any three game that they make. I always felt like Valve was had this crazy long-term strategy. Of so Half-Life 3? Half-Life 3. Left 4 Dead 3, Portal 3. Team Fortress Portal, 3, please. Portal 3, they were all going to come out. And maybe they'd have their own platform. Like, but this is back when they were talking about the Steam Box and the Steam Controller, which both turned out to be <laughs> awful. Well, Steam Box wasn't that bad. Oh, wait, what am I thinking of? Steam, Steam Box was the PCs that yeah, they yeah, made. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of Steam Link. Did those not go no, very No, Steam Link was actually no, not getting over. You can stream to the good. TV? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I've just, at this point, I don't have any faith that anything like that is taking place. Like, I remember... Well, they straight up said, we're not making Half-Life 3. They're like, we had the story and it, you know, it wasn't very good. Really? Maybe that's just, yeah. a, maybe that's just a fake out. I think it was pretty real. I think it was like people who'd left Valve were like, yeah, they would... We just couldn't come up with anything that was better than the last one and we didn't want to make something worse, so we just didn't make it. Like, I've, we spent a lot of time in the video game industry. I've never run across anybody who's working on any of those games. Yeah. Like, that would come up at some point, right? Well, they... Probably are under like a huge intense NDA about but it. I would imagine, but mm. I mean, it's like you can only keep stuff bottled up for so. I mean, they did leak the entire code for Half Life Two at one point. Well, not the entire code. Well, you know what I mean. It's like yeah, there's a lot pulled, of it. It was the source code that they had at the time, and then they restarted the game. Yeah, because everything got leaked out because of that. But yeah, I just I don't, I don't have faith. I don't think it's coming. And I would love Left 4 Dead Three. I would love that. That'd be yeah. great. Gus, you got all pissy on Twitter at a guy. Uh, we there was some announcement we, made about a shooter that was in the World War Z universe. Yes, he said he said that we must have missed it because I was giggling during the announcement. And I said, "Well, which announcement was?" They said, "Oh, well, it wasn't actually announced." I get mad because we have to do so much coverage that people pick apart what we're doing and think we're not paying attention. If it had come across, we would have noticed it. Yeah. So I get mad when someone makes the claim that I was giggling and not paying attention and doing my job. So yeah, I get mad about. I that. think you were doing your job. I was doing my job. I but I felt a little guilty it. about it because the guy, the guy did have nice in his username, <laughs> and I got I got mad at him. But uh, <laughs> hey, anyway, uh, I want to read this thing here. I want to remind everyone: this episode of the Rooster Podcast is brought to you by Hims. Sixty-six percent of men start losing their hair by age thirty-five, and that's two out of three men on the planet. Uh, the math adds up. Uh, and I don't understand why we turn to weird concoctions or gimmicks. You know, I love facts and science. If you have this problem, check out forhims.com, a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care and sexual wellness for men. Hims provides medical grade solutions, real doctors who offer quality generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair where it belongs. There's no waiting room and no awkward doctor visits. Save time and your hair by going to forhims.com. It's all pretty easy. You'll answer a few quick questions online, then doctors will review your information and prescribe a solution for you. I've talked about how easy it is, uh, how great a service it is, and I know we have other people here uh, who've also tried it out as well. Everyone has great things to say. You can order now, our viewers get a trial month, of Hims for just five dollars today, right now while supplies last. You can see the website for full details. This would cost you hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. It's so easy to use Hims. Go to forhims.com/rooster. That's f-o-r-h-i-m-s.com/rooster. Forhims.com/rooster. Thanks for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Oh God! <laughs> Bernie just made invented a s'more that looks edible. You should look at his smile. Oh, it, no, you fucking clean, cleaned, I cleaned it. it! I cleaned it. Damn you! you show what was what, what's going on over there? You gotta see. show the people what you did. Took the hot fudge. I dipped the spoon in it. Well, we need a demo. All right, and then you gotta eat it. Well, is anyone else gonna eat this? Because I need a clean spoon. Give me another spoon, please, please. That was I barked orders. So, Gus, let me ask you a question here. Ask me away. I got two teenage boys. I was, a, I, was, I was a teenage boy. They're, one. Jack, they're jackasses by default. Yeah. So one of the jobs they have is they have to bring up the garbage cans. From the, so you're talking after trash day, you bring it up from the curb That's back it. to the house. You okay. see the can down there, bring the fucking, bring the can up. So, sometimes it'll be good for like 8 o'clock at night, and I'm like, hey, did you bring the garbage cans up? And Jay's like, oh, no, we didn't. I said, go, go grab the cans. And then Ashley always does this thing. She's nearby. She goes, please. And I go, okay, please. But I don't have to ask, I don't say please. No. It's their fucking chores, no, right? Right. I mean, no, 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 one, no one ever said please to me. No. Common courtesy. That's a please. If please? You're, if you're interrupting someone to go and do something else for you. No, no, no. Please. They should have. It's their job. Jo it's their job. Well, then you say it sternly. 
of like, can hey, you do that, please? Please hey, go pick this up. Gavin, can you uh, please be on a podcast? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I never say that. Okay, here's what I'm doing. I got my pod like, budge. Hey, you want to be on the podcast? And I got, I'm gonna get this That's jar fair. of cookie smush. That's You're not different. telling me to be on the podcast. You're, You're like, asking. Look at oh, that. Yeah, look at that. A little treat. Want one bite, Gav? No, 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 that looks, looks a bit too rich. So you show us your smile? <laughs> oh, that looks great. Delicious. <laughs> So I, I feel like uh, we should oh mention. Oh my gosh, so much sugar, dude! <laughs> yeah, uh, we have the the broadcast tomorrow at five p.m., uh, which is going on. And there's you don't have to be a first member to watch that live stream. Normally, you do have to be a first member to watch streams live. Oh, look, you got a graphic and everything. Uh, live every tomorrow, June twenty sixth at five p.m. Roosterteeth.com. Are we are we doing that? And yet, direct everyone to Roosterteeth. Roosterteeth.com. Right uh, and donations, I believe, go to the Trevor Project. Yes, which is an awesome cause. So check it out. Yes. If you're a first member or not, you can see what a live stream is like. You can interact with people on screen. Did you get the new bin? What does that mean? The new bin. You got chocolate. It's for later. Oh. The third bin? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? There you go. Third bin? Is it yeah. like another trash can? Yeah. Uh, almost. Oh, I don't know what that's about. Did you get a third bin? Third yeah. bin. Yeah. So I have one bin that's brown. That's for trash. Mm -hmm. They have one bin that's blue. And exactly. that's for recyclables. Brand new, bin, brand new bin showed up, and it's now the exact same way that it's been in England for like 12 years or something, but now there's a food bin. Like a compost Oh, the compost, compost. bin. Is it green? Dude, I would yeah. love that. I would love that. I, I feel awful whenever I have to throw away food. My I, parents I, compost literally I, everything that is uh, allowed to be composted. Your parents are good people. Kleenex and everything. Everything that is allowed to be put in the Kleenex. compost. Kleenex. Yeah. Really? So... Do they have a composter or they have a special bin that's compost? It's a special bin that's just compost. Yeah, and then it goes to a central composting facility. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about like three bins. You know, it's I know bins. It, it's a it's a better management of waste. One's a has been. Nice. Aren't they all? Nice. Get the okay. All right, you're good. All right, she's good. Uh, they only do that in some parts of Austin, right? I think they're still. Rolling, I don't have one. They're still rolling that out. The <laughs> the, the compost. <laughs> that was not intended that way. It's the most smug laugh I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would the fourth bin be for if they were to Poop. bring one people? Out? People bin. Shrubs. Shrubs. Dead pets. You can put shrubs in composting. Mm -hmm. They have the no, special yeah, gardening waste. Wouldn't gardening waste. Yeah. Where do you yeah. put it now? Just in the regular trash. Gotta get these bags. The oh, hardware yeah. store. So beginning beginning today, they do curbside composting to half. So half of Austin has it at this point. Here's the problem in Austin, and I'm wondering if other municipalities have this exact same problem that we do. Austin put out this fucking study <laughs> that the citizens of Austin only recycle about 50% of what they should be recycling. But our fucking recycling only gets picked up every two weeks. It's so stupid. Just move it to every week. I would have a full bin. Yeah, every maybe they don't. Why the don't they do it every week? I don't know, Gus. They make money from the blue one. They don't make any money from you, the other one. Do you guys have here the two different types of recycling? No, it's single stream. Okay, because uh, I mean, back home in Canada, we had um, in Ottawa, one week was like cans and bottles, and the other one was paper and. Oh, dude, you gotta separate stuff. your trash no. for a week. Where I would. Keep it? I would love a service. Separate your recycling to, to cut down all this shit. I would love a service where every Amazon delivery, the delivery person just. Tears that shit out of the box and dumps it on the front porch and keeps the box. I it's hassle free. I don't want a bit. It's just cardboard. Even if they did it that way, every other week I would still have mounds of cardboard. I saw an Amazon delivery just driver. I was driving around over the weekend, and you know we're going in opposite directions, and he was driving one of those white vans yeah. that they have uh, for for like Amazon deliveries, not a UPS, not anyone else. It's like the Amazon logistics, and. That driver's dashboard and car was just filled with packages. I was like, there's no way that can be safe or there's no way that that's organized. It was like the prime packages and those yellow packages. And it's like, I could barely see the guy. It looked like a hoarder's car that was filled with shit. And I was like, how, one, how is that safe? Two, how is he finding anything? Three, how is it all not broken? It looked like it looked like a fucking nightmare. Listen, dude, you can look up Amazon and work conditions at the company. We, I've been reading a lot about it because of uh, Austin being one of the finalists for the headquarters, mm -hmm. the new headquarters for Amazon. It's pretty nuts. Like, there's stories about people in some of those distribution centers where they're pissing in bottles. I saw that. Yeah. Because they have time to piss in yep. a toilet? Jesus right. Christ. Yeah. So they just, like, to keep up with their quota and their numbers, you know, all those metrics they have, they just have to, like, not leave the floor. So they just piss in a bottle. How, uh, Which, by the way, that's going to be replaced by a robot probably in the next two or three years. Do you, you think... You mean robots are going to piss in bottles? <laughs> 
No, you're gonna piss in a robot, dude. What are you uh, stupid? What you Robot's think? gonna come to your front porch and open your boxes for you. <laughs> like legitimately, what do you think the chances are of Amazon coming to Austin? I don't know who the other candidates are, honestly. Uh, like, I, I, don't, I don't think it's great. I don't know that we want it. I don't know if I'd, I would want it. I don't think it's a I good think chance either. Austin's already overcrowded. I mean, that would mean I can have cardboard sooner. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's so the economy is so weird because I constantly see advertisements for job vacancies places at like. Maybe I'm crazy, but I mean, they seem like phenomenal starting rates. Like some places are like fifteen, eighteen dollars an hour for what? What? Like starting jobs? Oh, just places. anywhere? Okay. Yeah. What like, job do you think won't be replaced by a robot a in the future? A I think all jobs robot maker, could eventually no? be replaced. Robot maker? No. That's like yeah, every. That's like every future sci-fi horror movie. They start making themselves. Yeah. Let me. Th I don't know. President. <laughs> I mean, probably. <laughs> we have our first robot president. Uh, well, the robots will need a president of their own. Would they? Who's in charge of the robots? The president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the actual president. I the robot no, president. Like, I can't no, like, even King imagine that. Like, it, cat. In charge of a cat. a dog president? <laughs> That'd be so great. <laughs> There's nothing in the Constitution that says a dog can't be president. <laughs> What would a dog's campaign slogan be? Like, what would it campaign on? Woof, 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 yeah. woof, woof. <laughs> uh, free bones. Leash laws would be huge, like, political debate inside of the dog culture, I think. Like, the leash laws are inappropriate. <laughs> that would be terrible. They're inhumane. Why yeah. are people working on consent for animals before consent for robots? <laughs> Go on. Well, go what? ahead. No, what? I was actually thinking about bringing up animals during the consent for robots thing. Are you talking about bestiality? There's no such thing as a <laughs> <laughs> No! Well, what are you talking? You're talking oh. about the robot thing. Yeah, what are you talking about? No, I'm talking about like, should an animal get consent from another animal? I. <laughs> How would you enforce that, Gavin? Exactly. I don't know, train animals, train pets to be like, yes, I would like to be railed. <laughs> okay. I can't. I can't. No. What, okay. what if you have two cats? I can't. And one of them is getting done in every night. Then the other one fucking claws the first cat. Or runs away. I mean, teach teach that before you stop, you know, have to sign an agreement for a robot. The layers that we have of civility that make us a civilization is the limitations of some freedoms, you know, that the animal kingdom doesn't have. Like, if you were an animal, you could kill what, basically whatever you want to. Like, I, I've thought about this squirrel. If Joe was still alive, that squirrel would be dead already. Because Joe would just be like, I'm going I'm to fucking kill this thing. But it's the limitation <laughs> of those freedoms and things like that, that you're living with other people. And you have respect for their existence and their Some experience. Some people could do that. What's that? Some people. Yeah, they're criminals. No, it's in, like, tribes and stuff. It's like, that guy sucks, I'm going to kill him. Right. Not criminal. Well, they're not civilized either. So I mean, I would, I would say that if a tribe is like they're killing people, that's the, I would say that's a lack of civilization. Or some, they just had a prick. Oh, you mean they, they voted to kill a guy? Yeah. Oh, well that's, we have death penalty, which, I, we, that's a whole other can of worms. People don't but vote on that. People don't vote on it? Mm-mm. Well, eh, it's kind of like that, one of those weird things where it's like, it waters that down among us all, right? Like this guy died because everybody agreed that he did something that was bad. Enough. I guess technically a jury is voting on it. Yeah. That's true. Have yeah. you ever had... Similar to like a handmade style thing. Have you ever in your lifetime had a law just land and then the next day your life was different? Let me think about that. In, in, in even a small way. FCC ruled that <clears throat> um, we had to disclose any time we took money for anything uh, in, in a very specific way for internet stuff. And I still think to this day the amount of effort that we have to go through as online communities... The amount of effort that we have to go through to disclose ads is way more egregious than what other – like if there's a product placement in a movie, they it's buried in the credits at the end. They don't yeah. stop the fucking movie in the middle of the movie and say, hey, Coke gave us this. You know, I just want to be clear, everybody, Coke gave us this thing. Yeah, so, you don't see a hashtag in the opening to a Bond movie. You don't, yeah. you don't see Where that Aston stuff. Martin's hashtag ad. And I do think <laughs> you should be honest screen. about – Taking that stuff, yeah. But I think we, we should at the very least build it. But and um, you know, but that's something that changed. It was like now all of a sudden you put a, put like hashtag ad. You couldn't put promotional consideration by so and so at the end of the program like you can on TV. Now we have to put it like right there. You have to say descriptions, it. Yeah. everything. Yeah, you know. So that's something that's different. Is that anything to do with the age gate of some movies? Age gate. When that like an R-rated R -rated movie, you probably won't have five-year-olds you're advertising to in that, but online anyone can see it. Mm. You think it's a kid thing? Maybe. You've got to be really careful with advertising to kids. 
No, I agree with that. But there's other rules for that called COPA. Cabana? <laughs> Children's Online Protection Act. It's a big deal, especially if you have like communities or people places where people make accounts, like Club Penguin. There's all these special rules you have to have. Uh, that's why a lot of cutoffs are a certain age for a lot of different sites. Mm -hmm. Fair play. All right. Speaking but of are you, any rules, any laws, any laws that came out of nowhere? Uh, I think the one that maybe had the biggest effect on me, it's kind of a, a trivial thing, was the uh, the plastic bag ban in Austin. Of course, like all of a sudden one day you couldn't get plastic bags Got anymore. overturned? Did you see that? Yeah, the Texas uh, courts have overturned that. But that wasn't, I mean, it was just like, oh, okay, I got, I got to carry bags now. It was That was the most jarring thing. It's like, oh, this, this is the way I've done things for years in my life. I have to do it a little different now. I don't miss those little bags. I don't miss them at all. I hope I hope that retailers don't bring them back, even though it's not... Enforceable by law now, apparently. Yeah. I yeah, hope I hope we maintain that. I, I will who's keep fighting for that. I will keep use oil industry. Is it? I'm sure. But don't they make the big plastic pet plastic petroleum based uh, products? God. Uh, I'll keep using my reusable bags. I'm fine with it. I like them more. How much money does a person need? I guess the day Uber went away was kind of jarring, but that wasn't really a law. That was just Uber. It was just like Uber made a decision. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. It was based on the law, though. They did pull it out was. because they didn't of the... have to leave that day. That was they right didn't around... have to that day, but they were going to leave. Right? That was right around South by Southwest, wasn't it? Or they could have just found no, the law. I guess. It was. <laughs> it was uh, in before that. It was before, yeah, but but it was uh, South by was affected. Yeah. All right. Speaking of ending things, let's end this. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to go buy your ticket for RT Podcast Five Hundred. Sucked when they made Bye. fraud illegal. That sucked. Bye. Bye.